Hello all and welcome back to Bird Arena this beautiful Saturday evening. We have a special hockey game for you, the Davenport Panthers and the Ohio Bobcats. For Ethan Graham, I am Shane Dason, and this is the Ohio Bobcats Hockey pregame show. And Ethan, I've heard that we have an Ohio Bobcats Hockey News Alert. Yeah, an Ohio Bobcats Hockey News Alert. We can confirm several sources at this time letting us know that Ohio will be on the ice at 7.30 playing some hockey. 60 years of history here at Osciency Sea Bird Arena. There will certainly be more added on to that history after tonight. A huge game, a huge win last night for the Bobcats. A 7-3 victory. It was raining goals in the end. Hopefully for the Ohio Bobcats that continues. But Davenport lost by four. They look decent at times out there, Shane. Yeah, first started off 2-0 for the Bobcats. Coming out with an early lead just three minutes into the contest. Garrett Elmore feeding a rebound into the back of the net, putting the Cats up 1-0. Ohio got a power play goal from Nick Gross, his first collegiate goal to make it 2-0 before Davenport stormed back to tie the game at two early in the second period. Everett Thompson strips Grant Hazel of the puck down low, buries the biscuit behind Jimmy Thomas, and we had a 2-2 two, two game. After that, the Bobcats went on a tear, ripped off five straight goals. We saw five power play goals yesterday for the Cats, a couple from the stick of Jake Houston, Brian Lubin, and Gianni Evangelesi. Grant Hazel finally gets up the schneid. He reports his first power play bingo of the year. It was all smooth sailing for Coach Hogan and his team. 7-2 lead at that point. Davenport tacked on one at the end, uh, but it was no can do for the Panthers as Ohio escaped the opening game with a 7-3 victory. Yeah, it was definitely a night that was uh, led by that power play unit. Like we said, they've been cold for a number of weeks here, finally getting it going. We had the feeling that when Ohio got their power play unit going, the goals were going to come in bunches, and we were right about that, Shane. Five of the power play goals last night. Shane, this is an Ohio team that, you know, is pretty consistently draw, drawn penalties all season. And uh, they're going to look to get some more power play opportunities tonight. And I think a big reason for success on that power play, Shane, is uh, they're finding that good balance between overpassing, you know, just going straight to the net, you know. Uh, at times we've seen them get to the net maybe too quickly. At times we've seen them overpass. I think they had a good bounce of that last night. And Bobcats head coach Sean Hogan spec uh, spoke uh, with her own Jeff Stark after the game last night. Uh, about how those opportunities on the power play were coming from the middle of the ice. We saw Houston's goal and Hazel's goal at the end there, right from the middle of the ice, right from the scoring area, right from the blue line. Anytime you give those those guys, uh, Hazel and Houston and Evangelisti even, he got one last night too. That much time and space, they're going to score some goals for you. Yeah, Gianni Evangelisti with a beautiful power play goal. Uh, he had three points last night, now leading the team with 21 heading into tonight's contest. Big stuff from number seven, the sophomore forward. Getting it done again for Coach Hogan. When we talk about that power play and what they were able to do in the middle of the ice, there really was a concerted effort to work that puck around the zone, get it to the middle, and get those shots off quickly. We saw one timer opportunities from Jake Houston when he scored. We saw Tyler Harkins get uh, feeds in the middle of the ice, and he had a quick release. A couple times he almost found the back, and then at Brian Lubin, same deal. Uh, those were concerted efforts to get the puck to the middle of the ice, and I think it really did begin and end with the Bobcats propensity to work it around in the yeah. zone. Uh, there was no dilly-dallying. They were authoritative with the passing game. They knew where they wanted to go with it. They knew how they wanted to dictate the pace of play, and they executed the game plan perfectly. And it shows with five power play goals, the team that was having some struggles on the power play getting it done last night. We'll see what they can do with it again tonight. Yeah, let's not forget about that Nick Gross goal either, Shane. That was his first goal as a Bobcat, coming off of a great pass by Kyle Craddock. Uh, another great example of the shots coming from the middle of the ice. And like you said, it absolutely is a concerted effort. It's kind of interesting, right, to see how this strategy has changed a little bit. We saw them uh, employ a lot of shots from the point at even strength the last couple of weeks. Well, they're changing that up a little bit now, consciously or not, who knows. But they're getting more opportunities to net. They're getting, uh, they're crashing the net more, Ohio is. And they're really moving those power play opportunities back to the blue line, back to the scoring areas. We saw them utilizing the one-time a lot on the power play last night too, Shane. Yeah, that defense was making offense happen. It's really nice to see the versatility of Coach Hogan's unit. Uh, we talked about it from the outset of this season, being able to plug in guys like Garrett Jenkins as a forward or as a defenseman, guys like uh, Tom Picconi when he's able to get back into the lineup. We'll fill both of those roles for Coach Hogan, uh, and that really does pay dividends. Speaking of Jenkins, he makes his return to the lineup last night, played pretty well as a Bobcat 7 defenseman. He will be slotted in that very same role again here tonight. The lineups 
Uh, we'll be previewing here in a couple minutes, but um, Garrett Jenkins looked very well in front of Jimmy Thomas, but what Jimmy Thomas was able to do in making his 11th straight start for the Cats, 34-37 saves, he really did keep them in the game when Davenport looked to threaten and score a couple big goals uh, when Ohio was just uh, ahead like 3-2, 4-2 yeah. at that point. Yeah, Jimmy Thomas, 37 shots, like you said, Shane. That's definitely more than he's accustomed to seeing. The Ohio Bobcats defense would usually do a great job of getting in passing lanes, a great job of blocking shots, great job of just being responsible in general and not really have, letting Jimmy, you know, have any crazy, you know, breakaway opportunities or two-on-one odd man rushes, whatever you will. But like you said, Shane, Jimmy Thomas, when called upon all season, has been the story with him. Uh, he's made some key saves. 9-2-1 and one going again tonight. We expect him to go a 209 goals against average, and that's 914 save percentage. Jimmy Thomas, a great ACHA goalie, certainly responsible for a lot of the Bobcats' success, especially on the penalty kill, too. Uh, Bobcats are a team that's physical. They're just going to draw a lot of penalties. That comes with uh, the territory when you play a physical style of hockey. Jimmy Thomas, best penalty killer for the Bobcats all season, too. Best penalty killer has to be your goalie. Jimmy Thomas is that. Down on the other side of the ice, between the pipes for the Panthers, Jason Reinold last night looked pretty good at times. Obviously, the Bobcats were able to find the back of the net uh, seven times, put up the extra point, if you will, on the touchdown. But Jason Reinold did keep them in the game at points uh, before things kind of got out of hand. He made some big saves. Uh, do you expect the Panthers to go back to him tonight, or do you think they'll try to go with uh, maybe Nate Ferris or um, Tanner Swift tonight? You know, I think uh, Reinold did play a decent game, but anytime you let in seven, I mean, that's got to be a mental bearing. And a lot of those goals weren't his fault. We see this out of goalies a lot that come into Bird Arena. Uh, they start out well, they have a good first period, second period, maybe even, but they're eventually overwhelmed by Ohio. Ohio is so persistent at getting the puck on net, uh, playing their game, getting good quality, quality scoring opportunities. I think this was Ohio's best passing game of the season that we saw all night, at least at home. We only get to watch the home game. So I think last night was Ohio's best passing game that we saw last night, and I think that was tough for Ryan Olds. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Nate Ferris gets in there. He's 2-3, and three, has a higher goals against average uh, than Ryan Olds at 3-9-3. Three, three. Ryan Olds is 3-6-0. Uh, uh, Nate Ferris, 2-3, and three, but when Nate uh, gets it going, he is hot. He has two shutouts in his two wins this season, Shane. So Nate Ferris is out there tonight. He's looking good after the first period, has, maybe hasn't let a goal in, you know. Might start to worry a little bit if you're a Bobcats fan. We talk about how goaltending can steal games, how defense wins games. It really does begin and end on the back end. And with the Bobcats, Jimmy Thomas, and with either Jason Reinold or Nate Ferris, both of these teams will have favorable matchups there. When we come back, we will preview the Bobcats lineup, what Davenport will bring to the table, and we'll have some uh, predictions and some keys to the game for no, you yeah. guys coming up next on the Bobcats Hockey pregame show presented by ABW Productions.
And we are back at Bird Arena, joined by Ethan Graham Hi. and Jessica Stark. We are going to continue our coverage here, just about 10 or 15 minutes away from puck drop at Bird Arena. Bobcats with a big victory last night, 7-3, moved to 10-2-1 on the season. Davenport with the loss, falls to 4-6. We saw Davenport come out fast after getting down 2 nothing. tied the game at 2 last night, Ethan, and then gave up five straight goals. What do the Panthers need to do tonight to get the job done or to make it a little bit more even? Well, Ohio University plays an explosive game, obviously. You know, they're really uh, getting the puck deep. They're getting to the net. They're crashing the net with ease at times. I think if you're Davenport, you have to look to get Ohio off their game, right? We saw Ohio look a little bit sloppy in the first period. Davenport came out certainly ready to play the first two or three minutes of the game. Davenport uh, had possession of the puck for a majority of that, but Ohio really just uh, out-compete, uh, out-hustles, and, and just wears down teams. We saw that last night. Uh, Games so often, uh, the opposing team comes in here to Osai and Seabird Arena. Uh, they start out well, but it eventually just gets away from them. Uh, the Bobcats were too much, and it starts with the power play. I think if you're Davenport, number one, you got to stay out of the box, and number two, you got to take advantage of Ohio's mistakes. Ohio did make some mistakes, got caught on a couple of bad line changes. They have to capitalize on Ohio, Ohio's mistakes because they're few and far in between. And Jess, Ohio getting up 2 0 last night, surrendering that lead uh, to the Panthers at the beginning of the second period. What does Ohio need to do to get a lead and to keep it here tonight? Uh, not let Davenport back into the game. Yeah, Shane, well, um, last night the Bobcats really were able to come back. After every time that Davenport scored, they just were really able to get the puck back, you know, able to score right away. I feel like, you know, they were really powerful, especially in the second period. They had a lot of control over the puck. If they just keep that control and are able to capitalize on all those opportunities, and, you know, like they did last night, every time that Davenport scored, they were just able to come come right back around. So if they can just keep that momentum up and keep it strong, then they'll just have a great game, just like last night. Ethan, yes. we, saw, we saw Tyler Lau with yeah. an absolutely beautiful shot last night, the first goal of the game. Pick Jimmy Thomas's pocket there, uh, far side high where Grandma keeps her cookies. And yeah. we saw Everett Thompson steal the puck off Grant Hazel last night too. A couple difference makers for the Panthers. Who are you looking for tonight for Davenport to come out and have a big game? Well, I think Everett Thompson came in here leading this team in assists with seven after last night, and he showed us why he leads in assists, you guys. He is a good passer, very skilled passer, uh, knows when to distribute the puck, knows when to hang on to it. So I see Everett Thompson as someone who we have to look out for tonight uh, for the Panthers, and now he had that nice goal on that nice steal in the defensive zone. He has two layers to his game, uh, a multi-layered game, uh, an, an offensive uh, forward, but can also play the defensive you know, part of the game, too. I think Wade Weisgerber had a nice game last night. I think you should keep an eye on him, too, if you're watching this game. And Jess, for the Bobcats, who do you like tonight? Uh, Gianni Vangelesi with a goal and two assists yesterday. Gabe Lampron with the same stat line. Both of them look pretty good. Uh, more the same for them, or somebody else coming up and filling the void? Um, I would say, like, Evangelisti had a great game last night. I, you know, he's a great, powerful player. He can always get the puck, you know, get it to the net. I think he's again going to come out strong tonight. We got a lot of the guys back from last week. They were sick, hurt, and so I think, you know, I would say, you know, Evangelisti as well. Again, he's going to keep it strong. Who else do we have on first line tonight? Dave Lampon up there. Uh, Garrett Elmore and then Cody Black up on the first. Yeah, yeah I know. Um, Elmore had a great goal in the first last last game it got the Bobcats going got them you know a strong start so I think you know if they just keep keep moving then we'll be good keep moving always got to keep the legs moving got to keep skating Shane skating hard. very good advice from <laughs> our two commentators here as we look forward to tonight's matchup Ethan yeah. who do you got tonight and why uh, I think Ohio came in and they won this game pretty candidly despite some sloppiness last night uh, Bobcats head coach Sean Hogan has talked all season about how his team gets better as the game goes on as the weekend goes on. I think Ohio will win this game candidly 5-1. to one. Expect a big night from big time Jimmy Tim, Jimmy Thomas, and Golden Bobcats. Right, and Jess, who do you got tonight and why? Um, I would have to go with Ethan. Obviously the Bobcats. I think it's going to be a big game for them. They're going to come out strong. I mean, they had the win, the win under their feet last night, so I think it's going to really push them tonight. And I think, yeah, it's going to be a big game, big numbers, probably at least four or five. So I think it's going to be great. There you have it, folks. And we just want to quickly highlight that it is still you can play weekend here at Bird Arena. These nice pins, These nice provided pins. by NHL pins. Arena staff. Beautiful stuff. Uh, 
Uh, we're going to continue to celebrate here. Also celebrating Movember, the stashes. Yeah. Another day old, maybe a little bit darker. We'll They're see. pretty filthy. She still needs her. Jess still has to catch up, but ours are pretty, ours are pretty dirty. How she looks at the end of the month. But when we come back from a quick commercial break, we will get you guys the starting lineups and the national anthem as we look forward to another great night of hockey here at Bird Arena. Just about eight minutes until puck drop in, right on cue. The lights turn out here at Bird Arena as the players are about to take the ice. As we look forward to tonight's matchup, we will guys, we will preview the starting lineup for you guys. Uh, same as last night for those keeping score at home. Garrett Elmore on the first line, centered by Cody Black. Gabe Lampron on the right. That line looked pretty good last night. Elmore and Lampron both scoring. Uh, Black collected an assist as well even. Uh, pretty good stuff up front for the Bobcats. Yeah, nice pleasant surprise from that line. Not guys you expected to see in the scoring role this year, but scored some goals last night, definitely. Yeah, Gabe Lampron with 10 points on the year, five goals, five assists. He gets the nod again on the first line to start uh, the top six off, or to top the top six off, excuse me. Mike Palacic on the left side on the second line. Gianni Evangelesti centers the group, and Kyle Craddock fills out the right-hand side for the Bobcats. Kyle Craddock with an assist and obviously what we talked about. Gianni, a goal and two assist to offense up front for Ohio. Continues the same trend that we always see here. Yeah, I think if Ohio had a scoring line, I think this would be it. Uh, Evangelisti obviously having a nice year. Craddock coming in, playing well for the Bobcats. And Mike Classics also uh, near the top of the lead in goals on this team. Harkins on the third line left wing. Brian Lubin centers him. Uh, and Timmy Tano on the right side to round things out. For Ohio's forward unit, Drew Crandall and Zach Frank will be fourth line line mates. Uh, they might fill in some other spaces too. We will see how they get utilized by Coach Hogan. On the defense, we have Nick Gross and Jake Houston lining up on that top pairing for the Bobcats. The second unit will be Sean Bayer and Grant Hazel again. Those two look pretty good together last night, first time we saw them play together. Uh, and then Tommy Evans and Jake Fiala on the third unit. Gary Jenkins rounding them out in front of Jimmy Thomas, who is making his 12th straight start in that. Yeah, Jimmy Thomas, a great goalie, has had a great time here at Ohio University. But I look at that Gross and Houston line, excuse me. They played extremely well together last night. This is a Bobcats team with interchangeable parts. Uh, head coach Sean Hogan hitting all the right buttons last night, certainly letting uh, these defensive players play with a variety of different partners. We'll see what buttons he can press tonight. We're going to take you guys down to the ice for the announcement of the starting lineups and the national anthem.
and we are just about set to get underway here, folks. It's about to be a fun night of hockey at Bird Arena, the second of two games against the Davenport Panthers last night at Ohio with a 7-3 victory. We'll see what they can get out to tonight for Davenport, trying to avenge a tough loss against a tough ACHA opponent. Ohio now sits at 10 in the ACHA, Davenport at 17. You know, we got a matchup against some big heavyweights here, Ethan. Yeah, it should be another great night of hockey, but before we get into the game, saw a pregame ceremony there. Uh, it is still You Can Play weekend here at Ohio University. Uh, a, a great event put on by the Ohio University LGBTQ Center promoting diversity, Shane. And we're underway here at Bird Arena. Bobcats with the puck to start action here. Garrett Elmore into the zone. Down low and sweeps to the net. Traffic out front. Save made by Swift. And we'll get our first whistle 13 seconds into the action. Yeah, Swift in there, new goalie tonight. Our referees for tonight's game are led by Gordon Mitchard. Max Prexta is going to be a linesman, and so is Corey Lemaski, Shane. Cody Black lines up to take the draw for Ohio. That first line out here for Coach Hogan. Did very well last night. Sean Barrett off the faceoff win. Shot from the point. Goes to the corner. Up with it goes the Panthers. Through the neutral zone now. Anderson can't connect with his defensive partner. The puck is kicked back out toward Tanner Swift and the Davenport goal line. There's Sean Baird throwing the body around in the first shift there, Shane. No surprise. Up comes Thompson with it now. Lost and picked up by Nick Gross. Turned the other way with it before it is banked off the boards and played back out to Jimmy Thomas's end of the ice. And Jimmy Thomas going to raise his hand, call for an icing. A lot of flying around, not a neutral zone play. Definitely a feeling out process here early for both teams, Shane. Yep, just 49 seconds into the action. Ohio with an early shot on goal. Testing Tanner Swift early. Tanner Swift making his third start of the season for the Panthers. Coming in with a 4-6-6 goals against. We'll see if he can get a better showing here tonight. Picked up by Weisgerber. Centered and Gianni Evangelisti steals the puck in the middle of the ice. Turned over at the top of the zone. Weisgerber with it again. Deliberates and is shaken to the outside corner by Jake Houston. That was a great play by Houston to make him reconsider that, that, pat, that play there. Circling with it is Anderson. Up top for his defenseman. Modap with the shot out in front. And Jimmy Thomas gets a piece of it as it kicks back out. And the Bobcats get it out of the zone. We talked a lot about how uh, there was traffic in front of Jimmy Thomas all last night. A good example of it right there. Weisgerber is one of the guys in front of the net. Definitely look for more uh, of a net front presence in front of Bobcats goal contender Jimmy Thomas tonight from the Davenport Panthers, Shane. Harkins with a feed from his own end. Now into the Davenport side of the ice. Number 22, low with it. Steals the puck off a defender. And it comes to the corner. Brian Lubin will go there first. Garrett Jenkins with a shot off the post. Almost buried it. It was number 29. He had a good chance there as that puck came to his stick out in the middle of nowhere. Time and space galore to go with it. And he was so accurate, he rang it right off the crossbar off the byron there. Yeah, Jenkins, we don't see him uh, take a particularly large amount of shots, but maybe he should shoot more. That one almost counting for an early goal for the Bobcats. That would have been a big goal. Great opportunity by Jenkins. Number 29 still on the ice for the Bobcats out there with Tom Evans. Brian Lubin's line up front for Coach Hogan. The puck back now in Davenport zone. Played out to the hash. And there's a scrum down low. Tom Evans with that keep. Evans guides it down low. Timmy Tourneau sees the puck skate right by him. Cohen watches it over his head, and it'll come back out to the neutral zone. Tommy Evans chases on. Tom Evans had, with that keep, obviously, prevented the breakaway. And now he got action the other way. Two-line pass from Tom Evans all the way down to Drew Crandall. His shot is blockered down by Swift. And the puck comes to Davenport's O'Ron. He'll play it off the boards for his defensive partner. The two will catch a nice game behind the net before moving it up ahead. Everett Thompson into the zone, threw a couple Bobcat defenders, tried the backhand one to the net, was not successful in doing so. Puck now at the top of the uh, blue line. A couple Bobcats converging on it. Everett Thompson threw a couple of men. Corgan with the shot. Jimmy Thomas was there for the answer. Davenport with a similar start as they had last night. Coming out fast, getting a lot 
of uh, guys in front of the net. A couple of good scoring opportunities for Davenport already. The Panthers with a development here as they dump the puck in. Jimmy Thomas will glove it out of the air and whistle down for stoppage in play. 16-34 remaining in the first period. Shots 3-2 to two in favor of the Panthers in the early going. Still a lot of feeling out period out there. Uh, shots are 3-2 to two for Davenport. Pretty evenly matched hockey game so far. We see the Bird Arena T-Rex heckling the Davenport Panthers bench over there, getting in their faces, Ethan. It's something that he has became a fixture uh, at Bird Arena for. Yeah, the Rex uh, is certainly a distraction. Anytime you see uh, something that you believe to be extinct that is actually back alive, that is, that is major news. It's a very good visual. If you guys can't see it at home, pretty hilarious stuff here. The Bird Arena T-Rex becoming a staple in Athens, Ohio. Garrett Elmore tests a couple Panthers defenders down low, shoving a couple cross checks their way. The Panthers get it out. Ian Thompson will dump it in. Jimmy Thomas settles it behind his net, and the Bobcats now with a breakout attempt. Jimmy Thomas certainly not afraid to leave his crease at all and play that puck, act as a third defenseman at times. He's pretty responsible at doing that, Shane. Houston moves it along, up ahead to Evangelesti. Walks his own shot by Evangelesti off. A Davenport defender. The Panthers out of the zone, skating with authority through. And Joey Ogden shoots a puck that is sent down by Jimmy Thomas. The Bobcats looking to get it out of the zone once more. They are successful in doing so. Kyle Craddock skates now with it. His shot goes wide right of Swift and comes back out of the zone. Shane, this line of Craddock, Evangelisti, and Plasics have been given the Panthers problems all weekend. A nice couple of scoring chances right there. Here is Jenkins. Misses Evangelisti on the follow through. Oran. And a big hit there as the puck comes back to the stick of the Bobcats. Evangelisti will get it down low and retreat back to the top of the zone. Evans with it. Threads the needle. Cannot find Tyler Harkins, banks off the boards. And the Panthers now go the other way. Corgan and Anderson, shot in Grant Hazel's chest. He'll make the save himself and move it up ahead. Grant Hazel, a big body, did a good job of breaking up that pass, getting right in the lane. Not blocking it with a stick, but rather with the body. Evans, Evans with the spinorama, directs the puck up to Brian Lubin. He'll dump it in, and it will be settled by Tanner Swift. Misdirection there by Swift, almost. A botched play. The Bobcats turn around in the neutral zone, or excuse me, in the slot. Tyler Harkins almost was able to get that shot off, couldn't find the feed. And the Panthers now center. Anderson skates right by. And Brian Lubin will battle down low. White Scraper had a golden on the opportunity there. Shane, a two on one, has to, has to have a better pass. That was a great scoring chance. We will get a whistle here as that puck comes out of play, Ethan. First five minutes of last night, Ohio got off to a flying start. Was able to get out to a cool two goal advantage as we played the first five here tonight. What are your impressions from both sides so far? Uh, I think it's been pretty, pretty evenly matched game. I think Davenport's had some good scoring opportunities. Uh, we saw Weisgerber have that puck on his stick. Couldn't quite make a good enough pass to get a shot on net. They have to capitalize on the scoring opportunities. You see another quick release right there. They're definitely thinking getting the puck on the net, Shane. Harkins leaves one out in front for Brian Lubin. A nice little tuck by number 22 almost resulted in a scoring play for the Bobcats. Puck now out of the zone. Harkins turns around with it and tries to play it back on. Bayard will be the beneficiary of that pass by number 22. He has a shot. Ring off the glass and come out to the right side of Tanner Swift. Now his guide lock with it. Swats one all the way down, batted out of the air by Ogden. No high stick on the play. Davenport will continue to pressure in Ohio's end. Shane Jake Houston's out on the ice right now. He had a huge game for Ohio last night. One of his better games as green and white as he ices that puck down the ice right now. But be aware what number 11's on the ice for the Bobcats. Yeah, Jake Houston with his third goal of the season. 28 points last year, 11 goals for number 11. Only his third just 12 games into the season. Jake Houston, uh, I feel like there's a second level that we have yet to see from this kid. He's so talented, but 
you, you want to say that there's just more there. There's more there. Yeah, Jake Houston certainly playing above his uh, above his expectations this season for at least me personally. Sky seems the limit. Sky seems to be the limit rather for number eleven. Huey, they call him. Sophomore defenseman making a name for himself in Athens, Ohio, just a season and a half into play here and his Bobcats career. Pretty special stuff for the Pittsburgh native. Davenport turns that around. Sherman Mowry almost snuck that through Jimmy Thomas's outstretched leg. The goal scorer from last night, the third goal for the Panthers, Sherman Mowry, an offensive threat for Davenport. Yeah, that was a nice third goal that we saw Mowry score last night. Uh, definitely, Davenport has some guys that can score some goals at times. I know their goal differential hasn't been great this year, but their team, they have talent, they can score. Everett Thompson with the puck off the faceoff, battling with Garrett Jenkins down low. Ohio able to work it out to center ice before Anderson turns around and swipes it right back in. Evans up ahead to Elmore, coming up the ice now. Over to Black, has his shot blocked by Guidelock. And a few players will converge before Elmore gets a shot off, saved by Tanner Swift and whistle dead. I think we're seeing a much more conservative game so far, Shane. I would still say uh, that there may be a bit of a feeling out process going on out there right now. A lot of war of the neutral zone. Neither team is giving up the middle of the ice. We're seeing a number of these nine shots, uh, a total of nine for both teams early in this game, come from outside of the faceoff dots. One by the Panthers and around his own net and up the ice with it is Bassett over to Ian Thompson, second leading scorer for the Davenport Panthers. The Thompson boys are ones to watch out for. If you're the Bobcats, oh, that looked like it almost went in the net off the back end of Jimmy Thomas and out to the corner. Jenkins with a half-hearted whack at it, will not connect, and Gabe Lamperon will have to pick up the garbage for Ohio. Over to the other side, shot there by Lale. We'll send the puck right back into the zone for the Panthers. This is a good shift right now by Davenport. They have good sustained pressure. Not something we see a lot as the puck exits the zone, of course, right when I say that, but not something we see a lot uh, from teams coming into Ohio. We got to play the other way now. The refs will wave this play onside. Gabe Lampron skating down the middle of the ice. Garrett Elmore could not find him. Pass back to Elmore out in front, and he couldn't reach around for the puck. We'll send it down low for Gianni Evangelisti. Gianni Evangelisti with a good keep earlier in that shift. This is a Bobcats team that's skilled but persistent. They do the little things like prevent the puck from coming out of the zone. Good sustained forecheck right now here by Ohio coming back the other way. Craddock stops the puck at the boards. And the Bobcats back to work here. Garrett Jenkins battling with Corey Bussing down low. And Jenkins winning that battle. Gets the puck to his stick. Tries to sweep it to the net. Unable to do so. Yeah, Bobcats definitely... A high stick right there. You could hear Bobcats head coach Sean Hogan on the bench encouraging his team, saying now we're ready to play, now we're moving. Uh, definitely wasn't pleased with that previous shift where Ohio got pinned in their own end there for a second. At the halfway point in the first period, still a scoreless contest here at Bird Arena. As we mentioned last night, Ohio got up to a quick 2-0 lead in the early going. Not the same result at this point so far. Shots 7-5 in favor of Davenport. Yeah, Davenport, definitely a conscious effort to get more shots on net. When you get more shots on net, leads to more freezes, leads to more zone time, uh, leads to more face-offs in front of Jimmy Thomas, and that's what Davenport needs. They had a hard time sustaining pressure last night. Jimmy Thomas watches that puck come to his crease, and he'll fall on it for the whistle. Davenport shaking their heads out there. Slapping their sticks on the ice. Chris Corgan, wish he could have had that opportunity back. Yeah, Chris Corgan, talented goal scorer uh, for Davenport, comes in second on the team with four goals behind Ian Thompson, who has five. If his name's Thompson or his name's Corgan, look out. They're goal scorers. The Bobcats with the faceoff win. Houston's attempt blocked by the Panthers, and they'll send it back in. We'll get a whistle up top as Pat Modaf skates and makes a play on the puck. Couple guys exchanging words there down low, Ethan. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna have a penalty upcoming. Looks like that's number 27, Jake Pover. And 
and a few explicitives there. Not to the satisfaction of the refs. We'll get a two minute power play on the board for the Bobcats. As we mentioned, number 20, Jake Pober heading to the box. We'll have to sit and think about what he did wrong there, Ethan. Yeah, a lot of dads in attendance tonight. It is Dad's Weekend at Ohio University. Hopefully, uh, Jake's dad didn't hear him use that kind of language. Speaking of family time here, we would like to shout out a couple beautiful uh, families that are watching the show tonight at Pepino Sports Bar in Kentwood, Michigan. Uh, East Kentwood players for the Panthers include Tyler Lale's fam Tyler Lale and his family, Adam Guidelock and his family, Sherman Mori and his family, and Walker O'Ron and his. So thank you very much for tuning in all the way from Kentwood, Michigan, and for everybody else who is watching their Davenport Panthers play tonight. We welcome you to the broadcast. Thank you for tuning in. Brian Lubin now walks all the way down past Tanner Swift and rips a shot off the backboard. Played on by the Panthers and out of the zone comes Davenport. Chris Corgan goes the other way, tries to flip around Garrett Hazel, and he's successful. Backhanded one toward Jimmy Thomas's crease. Wasn't able to get one to the net, but that was a nice attempt there by Corgan. Nick Gross takes a shoulder from Everett Thompson, and the Panthers will go the other way with it now. Still, Captain. still a lot of neutral zone play in the early going here, Shane. Both teams being extremely conservative with their line changes, short shifts, an extremely conservative game all around, I would say, to start it out here. It's about eight and a half left in the first. Cody Black yet to score this year, takes the puck in to the Davenport zone. We see the Bird Arena T-Rex down by the penalty box. And he watches on as Jimmy Thomas is snags one out of the air for a whistle. Faceoff will come out in the Bobcats zone. 36 seconds remaining on the power play for Ohio. In addition to the Pobert penalty, Jake Houston also went off to the box. We are experiencing four on four hockey here at Osiris Seabird Arena for about 36 more seconds. And we apologize for that, folks. Houston was so slippery, he kind of snuck right by us slippery. there. Like Nate four Rourke, Nate four. Rourke, another guy who's slippery. Four on four hockey here now. Nate Rourke has been incredible this year, Ethan. Devilishly Bobcats, slippery. Seven and two, the transfer quarterback from Canada too. They call him Air Canada. He has looked great for Ohio this year. Playing Toledo this week, gonna be a big matchup. Could decide the MAC championship. Potential MAC championship preview as well, Shane. I'm sure the football team's rooting on the hockey team right now as Timmy Turneau centers one. And Tanner Swift gloves it out of the air for the whistle. Uh, these sports teams at Ohio really showing great camaraderie. They all participate uh, with each other in different fundraisers and events, all showing support for each other uh, by going to the games. You really love to see the culture of winning and success here at Ohio. Yeah, definitely. And it's not just the athletics. You go out in the community here in Athens, Ohio, and everyone seems to know everyone. It's a one big family here in Athens. It's something special. The Bobcats. And the Panthers go back to five on five hockey as those penalties expire. Zach Frank dumped one in, up ahead for Gabe Lampron. Finally comes back out of the zone. Sean Bayard cannot reach for the puck as the Panthers have it now. Frank enters the zone with it. Shot by number 21. Wide of Swift to the left. Back out is Gabe Lampron. And he watches. As Davenport strips the puck off his stick and moves up ahead with the guide lock. Over to the other side of the ice. Shot there by Hodgson. It looks, looks to be number 26. Jimmy Thomas with the save. Bobcats go the other way with it. Now Mike Palasic gets chunked up ahead by a defender, Taylor Lau, Tyler Lau, excuse me. And the puck back out to the neutral zone. That was a great move by Hodgson on that last shift. A textbook toe drag sheet. Showcasing his scoring touch and his scoring finesse. Joey Hodgson, a special player for the Panthers three points this year. One of many guys that Bill Sweeney can rely on to create offensive plays. Yeah, we've seen a lot of skill goals this week and almost another one right there. You like skill? These are your two teams. Houston off the backboard and a deliberate pass there to Kyle Craddock out in front of the net. The Bobcats work it the other way and back up top now. Houston slaps it over to Gianni Evangelesi on the other side. Gross out in front, shot by Gross. Saved by Swift. 
Nick Gross out in the same area he scored at last night, waiting for an, a feed here as Gianni Evangelisti does give it the puck to him. He banks one behind Tanner Swift and Jake Houston will sweep down to pick the puck up. Pressures one away and finally is pinched by Davenport's defender. The Panthers go the other way with it. Everett Thompson with a shot. Kicked away by Jimmy Thomas. And the Bobcats now re-enter the Panthers zone. Mike Blasics can't catch up with that puck and he is not happy about that one. No, either. he had a couple of nice drop passes there. It looked to be a nice play developing, but Mike definitely frustrated after that one fizzled. And a perfect cut there as we get a whistle. 5.44 remaining in the first period. Still a scoreless contest. A big contrast from last night, in which we saw the two teams played a 2-1 at the end of 20. Shots now 10-6 in favor of Davenport. Both sides have gotten some offensive opportunities. This has been a tight game so far, Ethan. Expect more of the same as we head toward the end of the first period. Yeah, I absolutely do. You know, Ohio's down on the shot clock, but I don't think they're playing bad by any means right now. Harkins to the middle, Nick Gross! And he buries the biscuit in the basket. It was nasty, it was thick, it was gross. Nick Gross scoring his first goal last night, follows it up with his second here tonight. And a second first period goal for the Bobcats. Gives them the one nothing lead here with 534. We talked about what they were able to do over the first couple 15 minutes. And they respond in a big way. Almost on QE, and that was insane. Yeah, Nick Gross, the guy who knows the golden rule. He's feeling hot. He's taking some shots. One thing we've learned about shooters, it is that they have to shoot. Nick, a couple of shots, a couple of goals this week, and it's one nothing Ohio, about five and a half minutes left. Behind Tanner Swift. High right where Grandma keeps her cookies. What a beautiful shot from Nick Gross. The Bobcats now have the puck back in Davenport's end as they look to extend what is now a one nothing lead. Luke Cohen skating the puck back Jimmy Thomas's way, centered one. Davenport now with a puck at the hash. It's sent back in by the Panthers and Grant Hazel will look on. Everett Thompson trying to glove one out of the air. It's picked up by Cody Black who falls to the ice as he tried to walk through the slot. Grant Hazel will keep it in the zone for the Bobcats. And a sweeping attempt in front of the net. Gabe Lamprom out in front. Tanner Swift doing a snow angel trying to keep that puck out of the net. And Gabe Lamprom almost had his sixth goal of the year as he converged on the crease. Shane, I could be wrong, but I have not seen Jake Fiala out there uh, to start this game for Ohio. We will have to monitor the captain's status here. We saw him take the pregame draw and come back to the bench. It looks as though he may be in uniform. We will update you folks on that. No, he was battling an injury heading into this week. He missed some time at practice, uh, but he was in the lineup yesterday. So uh, that would be a development if the senior captain does not end up playing tonight for the Bobcats. Ohio has the puck now entering the zone is Garrett Elmore. He's tripped up on the play, and the Panthers will go the other way with it. Ian Thompson watches on as Garrett Jenkins plays the puck. And Thompson steals it from him, and he shoves off Jenkins and kicks one up to his forehand. A big play there by Thompson, who will not be denied right now. Garrett Jenkins riding him all the way behind the net, but Ian Thompson gets the pass back to one of his own men. That was Wade Weisgerber with the shot. Weisgerber back to Thompson, shot by Thompson. Saved by Thomas. Great save by Thomas to take away that half of the net and move laterally. Good chance there by Davenport. And with his one nothing lead in jeopardy, Jimmy Thomas comes up with a big save for the Bobcats. His 11th of the night, Jimmy Thomas making 34 yesterday, has faced a lot of shots from the Panthers. Not something that Ohio has characteristically given up a lot of in the early season or over the last couple seasons to see Davenport come out here and put up 37 yesterday and 11 in the early frame so far. Uh, it's got to be an encouraging sign if you're a Panthers fan 
and it may be a little bit of a concerning sign if you're a Bobcats fan. Yeah, Davenport's definitely doing a good job at not a, what a lot of teams have been able to do here at Bird Arena, and that's get a good quantity of shots on Jimmy Thomas. Still a lot of time here uh, remaining in the game, and Ohio might be down some defensemen right now. Tyler Harkins with a feed. Gar Excuse me, Zach Frank was the man who tried to pick up that rebound high over the head of Swift. A golden opportunity for the Bobcats as they had strength in numbers down low. Whacked away by Houston and played on by Crandall. The Bobcats enter the zone once more. Harkins with a shot off the backboards. And back to Tanner Swift. He fell on the puck for the whistle. Didn't want any extracurriculars happening from that wacky bounce, Ethan. Yeah, Swift is a guy who's come in here. Uh, you know, not the stats where we would like to see him, but a good opportunity for him play a good Ohio team early in this season. Um, he's held his own there in the net there. Tanner Swift doing a nice job so far. Last year, number one was 13 and three with a 306 goals against and an 889 save percentage. So you know he's got a little bit of a pedigree. He's got- Certainly some experience. He's got some wins under his belt and that can never hurt. Mike Palasic watches as Gianni Evangelesti Stops on a dime, sends the puck all the way to the other side, and Grant Hazel pinches low. Hazel shoves Lael down to the ice, number three with a big hit there. Sean Bayard watches the puck skip right over him. The Bobcats about to regroup in the neutral zone. It's a great play there by Lael to poke that puck out of play. Gianni Evangelisti was on the end board there. They caught Davenport in a line change. Would have been a huge. Uh, Odd man rush for Evangelisti and the Bobcats there. Great play by Lale. Tyler Lale scoring his second goal of the year last night. The first goal for the Panthers. A beautiful shot. Cannot understate that. It was an absolute threat of the needle. And as we get another whistle here, 2 one remaining in the first period. Ethan, shots 11-11, make a wish. Oh, I, no, I can't, I can't say that loud. I was talking the other day about wishes. I think if I had a superpower, I think I might be a genie chain. Yeah? I think it might be a genie. How many wishes would you grant to somebody? Would you give them three or would you give them five? Well, I think three is, three is certainly the standard. Three? It would definitely be a rule that you could not wish for more wishes. Well, if you're Mike Tomlin, you never want to break the standard. The Steelers head coach emphatically always asserting that the standard is the standard. But honestly, personally, I'm more of a one wish type of guy. I think if it's something that severe, you better be pretty certain about what you want. I know the Bobcats won a victory here tonight, one nothing. With a minute 30 left, Tyler Harkins streaking to the net, to his backhand, cannot tuck it behind Tanner Swift. A sprawling. The Gavin net's off and the Panthers referees don't goalie. realize it. Didn't have to make the save as Tyler Harkins could never get the trigger pulled, but a great opportunity showcasing his speed down the middle of the ice, almost a dangerous play there for the Bobcats. Gabe Lampron now with the puck, directs it to the corner for Timmy Turneau, or excuse me, Cody Black. We'll have a whistle here as the net is off its moorings. Tanner Swift, a beautiful diving effort there, keeping Tyler Harkins honest. Shots 11-12 in favor of the Panthers right now. Just about a minute left in the action here in the first period, but it's been a tight first period so far, Ethan. Yeah, it has been a tight game. Neither team really giving up a lot of space, not a lot of open space out there on the ice. Looks like we have an ice issue, because of course we do. It's Bird Arena. It's been around for 60 years. God love it, but it is kind of falling apart here. Uh, definitely an ice issue in front of the Davenport bench. It was kind of funny. Did you uh, hear about Tampa Bay the other day when Steven Stamkos uh, got, five, got fined $5,000 uh, for squirting water at a Rangers player? And uh, they were out there, and Stammer and uh, another Lightning player, I forget exactly who it was who uh, made the quote, were talking about it. And uh, Stammer goes, yeah, the ice looked a little dry. Ice, ice sometimes is dry. That is a real thing, dry ice. Did you know that? Yeah, a couple days ago, it was Halloween. We saw a lot of dry ice as fog machines made their way to Athens, Ohio. Plenty of fog here. Very, it was a very frightening weekend. It was. It was pretty cold, too. I was... Personally freezing went as a gladiator. Not a good decision. Thankfully, I had a cape to use as a coat. And time ticks down, 45 seconds and counting as the puck is in the corner. 
A bunch of players converts. Tyler Lale drags down a Bobcat. That is Cody Black getting back to his knees now is number 18 and he will catch up to the play which is now in the neutral zone. Seen a lot of play in the neutral zone as this one's moved Houston ahead. With a feed shot low. Away from Tanner Swift. Jake Houston, a beautiful pass there from Garrett Elmore. Finds a stick of number 11. And he almost has his fourth goal of the season. Gabe Lampron dragged down to the ice. We'll get a whistle here. Looks as though Tyler Leo will be headed to the box. That looks to be number five. Yes, Tyler Leo heading to the penalty box with 15 seconds left even. You don't want to be taking a penalty like that if you're the Panthers. And now this is a bad time of the uh, period to take a penalty. Things that happen in the last minute or so usually kill momentum or gain momentum, whether it be goals, penalties, good scoring opportunities. Definitely not what Davenport wanted, especially with this Bobcats prior play. Lethal last night. We saw him score five goals. They'll have a chance here uh, to close out the period and a lot more of a chance to start the next one. Up top for Jake Houston. Leaves it for Palasics who dumps it to Evangelisti. Houston in the middle, over to Evangelisti, shot, score! And give me a Gino Gianni, number seven with his 10th of the year. And Ohio with a two nothing lead, just like that, 10 seconds in to the power play opportunity. His fourth power play goal of the year, and Ohio continues the good times at Bird Arena on the man advantage. And that has got to be a dagger for Davenport. Just five seconds away from escaping only down a goal. That two goal deficit now looms large over their head, Ethan. Yeah, that's Bobcats head coach Sean Hogan called Gianni Evangelisti a winner last night in his post game comments with Jess. And he's showing us why right there, making it look easy at times, just sitting right there outside of the face off dot, letting it fly when it's put on his stick. Great pass by Houston, too. There you have it, folks. Through one, it is 2-0. Ohio scoring about 10 minutes into the first period and adding one with five seconds left in the period. Nick Gross, uh, the first goal scorer for Ohio. Johnny Evangelisti picks up the second. His 10th of the year paces all Ohio scorers. And that is the start that Coach Hogan wanted to come out with. Didn't surrender any goals. Got out to a 2-0 lead, just like yesterday. Hopefully this time, if you're a Bobcats fan and if you're a Bobcats player, who can hold the lead? Yeah, Ohio getting an obviously huge goal at the end of the period there. Um, definitely uh, disappointing for Davenport there. Um, but yeah, huge goal at the end of the period there. They're up to right now. It is the most dangerous lead in hockey. I don't need to tell you that. You're a smart guy. You already know that. Ohio has to possess the puck more. We saw Davenport uh, get a significant quantity of shots on Ohio. Some good scoring chances. Both the Thompson kids look good. Corgan looks good. White Scarers tuned in. Tyler Lale, uh, if he can stay out of the box, definitely going to have a big game there. Taking a bad uh, penalty at the end of that period, but scored a goal last night, showed us he could score. Had a couple of good shots from the point there that period. All right, and we're going to send it down to the locker room. Our very own Jess Stark with an Ohio Bobcat. Jess, who do you got down there? Hello? Infamous Bird Arena t You've been a, for all the many years that you've been alive. Would you say that you've been a big time hockey fan this entire time? So, what is your favorite thing about Bird Arena and the Bobcat hockey team? So, do you like do you like to travel with the team? Like, are you have you have you become a big like? Would you like to say you're now the mascot for the Bobcat hockey team? So is there anything else you'd like to say to our viewers out there on this wonderful Saturday night? <laughs> Thank you. Jessica Stark here with the Verderina T-Rex. Well, thank you very much, Jess. A pleasant surprise there. We thought she was going to go grab an Ohio Bobcat. She ended up with the Verderina T-Rex. Even better, you know, not something you see every day. Or You're every just, million years, every yeah. couple of million years, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. What, what, you were busting out those uh, time periods from the crustacean era. No crustacean. That would that would 
crustacean would be uh, a creature that lives in the ocean. <laughs> where the Crustaceous period. Yeah, it's close. Was the dinosaur period. I'm sure there's I believe crustaceans the Jurassic around it period, too. the Jurassic period, obviously Jurassic Park. Yep. We love Jurassic Park here at Ohio University. And ABW, special stuff from Jess's. We have the figure skating team on the ice here. Synchronized skaters always in uh, rhythm, in, in sync, if you will. Yeah, that's why they call them synchronized skaters, putting the synchronized in synchronized skating. <laughs> Special stuff here at Bird Arena. Everybody getting in on the fun this weekend. We saw the You Can Play organization come in uh, to support uh, diversity and inclusion for everybody in sport. We saw the Movember Foundation in Ohio Hockey teaming up uh, to grow some stashes to raise support for prostate cancer and men's mental health awareness. We have the Bird Arena T-Rex, which is always a thrill. He is a great dinosaur. Probably my favorite. Among the best Rexes I've ever I seen. I met a few dinosaurs, but I think he takes the cake for favoritism there. Uh, and we have the figure skating team out here putting on a great show. The ladies look lovely at night, Ethan. Yeah, it's really a great team effort out there. Some fantastic skating. Uh, you know, Nick Gross is a great skater, great goal scorer, but this is also some great scoring. I'd, I'd be curious to see what would happen if we handed these ladies some sticks. Or if we put those Bobcat hockey players in some figure skates and tried to get them to do this. That would be very entertaining, Ethan. Yeah, maybe we That would be funny. That I would be something that. I would look forward to seeing. We're going to have to see if we can, we're going to see if we can orchestrate that. Yeah, I think, I don't see why we couldn't. Uh, Jake Fella, I know we talked about him not being out there on the ice in the first period. Uh, he was on the bench, did come out and talk to the referees at the end of that period. Uh, he is suited up. Maybe they'll use him depending uh, if they go down another defenseman, but Jake Fila out there on the ice. We'll see if he returns to this game. Definitely a huge part of the Bobcats lineup. And we will keep you updated on that one, folks. What do you want to call this, Ethan? I would call this the rotating time grabber. It's a very interesting name. How'd you come up with that one? Well, it is rotating in uh, similar to a clock does. And I feel like they're just grabbing time, uh, grabbing about 13 more minutes of time before we have to go talk about hockey. So. That is why I came up with that name. This is pretty impressive stuff. I don't think I would be so organized, to be quite honest with you. I'd probably be a mess out there. No, I certainly, we certainly would. Back I when would. I first started playing uh, hockey, they put me in figure skates, and I learned to skate program that I was in. And, <laughs> oh man, let me tell you, I hit the ice, my first uh, toe pick went right in, and I face planted. Ended up jarring a couple uh, brace brackets loose broke a tooth or two. It was pretty messy stuff. Uh, much better are these ladies than I ever could be at figure skating, so we'd love to commend them. Great stuff and a great performance there, but we do have more hockey to talk about here, Ethan. Just about 12 minutes until the Bobcats and Panthers take the ice. Before we jump into the hockey action, I want to pose a quick question for oh, you. Oh, I would love questions. Who do you think oh. would win in a fight, a Bobcat or a Panther? You know, we are talking about this a lot. Uh, pre-game. I know we were talking about this uh, pretty much throughout the day and throughout the week leading up to this game. This is something it's a of, hot issue that we yeah, were really focused it's, on. It's something very important that we wanted to make sure we brought up tonight. I'm going to go with the Panther just from the size ability and the speed ability. Panther is a very quick animal. The Panthers uh, have a professional football team named after them. It's a very quick animal. Uh, we see Panthers come in all sorts of colors. Uh, there's some uh, black Panthers. There's Panthers with spots that I think they're called Jaguars. Uh, but I'm going to go with the Panther just from the size advantage. Uh, but at the same time, Bobcats are rare. They're feisty, and they are small. So uh, a Bobcat, you know, it can get lower than a Panther. You know, we always see in football the low man usually wins. So maybe the Bobcat, if it got low, maybe took out the legs of a Panther, uh, that could be a way for, for a Bobcat to win in a fight with a Panther. What do you think? Well, a panther is a jungle cat. Let's it make is. That, yeah, let's yeah. make that very clear, folks. The panther is a jungle cat. And the bobcat's more of a mountain cat. Yes. Uh, now, you got to take into account the terrain in which they roam on. Of course. The bobcat, shifty, has to climb mountains. That's pretty impressive stuff. Uh, now, the jungle cat, obviously, fighting other creatures, fighting maybe rainforest conditions, could get a little wet out there. Perhaps more they predatorial. Gotta be, and they got to be agile. Uh, they might slip on some wet leaves or something on the jungle floor, but... I think their ability to climb trees, uh, the panther that is, uh, their, their coloring, and that, that black coloring makes it very right. difficult for them to be spotted at night. And 
just the overall size, velocity, veracity of these things. Uh, I'm going to give the edge to the Panthers. But uh, I'm, my, I've got a little heart, a little soft spot for the Bobcats here. Uh, Rufus, specifically, probably my favorite of all Bobcats. Disappointing he couldn't show up tonight and join the no. T-Rex over here, eh? No, Rufus is probably only contracted out to NCAA events. Uh, it, it's really quite amazing how they've domesticated not only Bobcats, but T-Rexes here on the Ohio University campus. Truly great stuff being done uh, by our veterinarian department here at Ohio University. There you have it, folks. Great vets here, great hockey here for you guys. When we come back from a short commercial break, we will actually talk about what actually going on in the game. Uh, and we'll have some more fun analysis for you guys here on the Ohio Bobcats Hockey Intermission Show. Ohio up 2-0 at the end of one.
We are live back here at Burton Arena. Five minutes until the start of the second period. Ohio nursing a 2-0 lead at the end of 20. Thanks to goals by Nick Gross and Gianni Evangelisti. Yeah, two skilled players who are showing off their skills this weekend, both with a couple of goals in the last night's game. Gross, another absolutely potent seeing eyes shot there from the top of the point. A uh, heat-seeking missile of a hockey puck that opened the scoring for Ohio. Gianni Evangelisti, we can't say it enough times. You give Gianni time and space, he's going to make you pay for it. A great power play opportunity right now. That shot was flying off that great one-timer opportunity, something Ohio has been looking to do more with their power plays. Focus on that one-timer. Those were two picture-perfect goals, almost exact snapshots of the two goals from both of those guys last night to yeah. Gianni Evangelisti. At the top of the circle there, like always on the power play, beautiful shot. That puck trickle, trickles through traffic and finds the back of the net. Nick Gross manning the power play, uh, quarterbacking it, if you will, up top at, uh, at the bottom of the blue line there. He has become a weapon there for Ohio. Yeah, they have a lot of guys who are weapons, a lot of goal scorers, a lot of skill out there this weekend. Uh, and you see it for Davenport, too. I mean, Lale's having himself a good weekend. I know he took a bad penalty at the end of that period there, but he's been a, he's been a guy on the back end for Davenport who I've been impressed with. Big hitter there, number two, uh, five is two. We saw him mix it up down low behind Tanner Swift. Speaking of the goaltender for the Panthers, mm -hmm. what were your impressions about number one after the first period? Do you think he has looked a little bit better or maybe about the same or uh, slightly worse than Reinhold did yesterday? I think you would have to grade it an incomplete, give it an old eye there for you, capital I. Uh, it's still a lot of the game left. Uh, something I noticed more with his game, uh, Swift, that is, is that he's uh, more aggressive when playing the puck. We've seen him dive out of the crease a few times. Um, you know, we haven't really seen him play the puck as much, but on those rebounds, uh, when he gives them up, he is very aggressive. We've seen him, you know, leave his crease, you know, not be in any bad positions yet, but he's definitely taking some chances out there. And he's got to stay on his toes. We saw the Bobcats implement a strategy uh, that worked really well for them in the first period about passing that puck off the backboard and setting guys up in front of the net with the rebounds from those Caromes. And they've been some really nice uh, scoring chances had by the Bobcats because of that. We saw Jake Houston with the intentional slapper off the backboard right to the stick of Kyle Craddock, took it right to the net off the rebound. Uh, if Tanner Swift uh, doesn't uh, kind of stay agile in his crease and keep his head up there, that could easily be a goal for Ohio. So he's definitely got a lot on his plate tonight. Ohio pulling out all the stops, coming out with all the tricks here at Bird Arena. Yeah, we're seeing Ohio do a lot of work behind the net. Wayne's office, they like to call it. Wayne Gretzky, of course, did a lot of his work from behind the net. But, yeah, we've seen Ohio go off to the corners with that puck, win those puck battles in the corner, and center that puck, uh, or find the open man. Evangelisti, obviously, all the way over there on the other side of the ice, had a great scoring opportunity, made him pay for it. A lot of work coming from Ohio below the blue line, and it's kind of the opposite of what we've seen the last couple of weekends. A shift, uh, a focus more deep in the zone for Ohio than those shots coming from the point. Ohio facing its fourth straight ranked opponent. will go and play seven more ranked opponents in a row after this weekend. So they're going to have to change things up as they face some really stiff competition in the ACHA. We saw Coach Hogan wasn't afraid to mix up the lines. He wasn't afraid to mix up the strategy as well earlier on. Uh, he was focusing most of his offense from the top of the zone, and now he's really driving play from the bottom of the uh, bottom of the zone. Excuse me, uh, behind the crease, below the goal line, and uh, those defensemen getting down low. We saw Grant Hazel uh, with some really nice pinch efforts there. Garrett Jenkins getting himself involved along the boards as well. Uh, they are showing them uh, showing a propensity, excuse me, to be willing to get down low and make plays for Ohio. Yeah, they definitely are, but uh, I think that they're able to get deep in the zone because these defensemen are so responsible. Um, we see him jumping up a lot there. I know Sean Barry jumped up in that period and him and Hazel kind of got dealt, they got stuck in a tricky situation, a pickle, if you will, there at one point in the period. But uh, a very responsible defensive for it that's not afraid to jump up, like you said, and work behind the net, work in the middle of the offensive zone, really get to the middle of the ice, a lot of scoring opportunities. And no guy has done that better this weekend for Ohio than Jake Houston. I mean, we can't say enough about this guy, obviously. Uh, a, a couple of great points last night, uh, really taking over the game at times, quite honestly, last night. Jake hasn't been able to find the same uh, success on the score sheet just yet, but certainly plenty of game left. And we are just about set to get the second period started here, folks. As we mentioned, 
For those of you just joining, Ohio takes a 2-0 lead into the locker room at the end of one. Goals by Nick Gross and Gianni Evangelisti give the green and white the advantage. The rest still working that ice over between the Panthers' blue line and where T-Rex is standing. Something else we should mention, Shane, for anyone who uh, missed the first period is just coming in now to join us. Uh, big story, Jake Fiella dressed up, suited up for the Bobcats, participated in the pregame ceremonies, but was not out there in the first period. He did come back out there. He is on the bench right now. I did see him come out there. This is where Ohio looks smart, dressing that seventh defenseman in Garrett Jenkins. Normally, they'd be down uh, to five defensemen. That would be an issue, but they dressed six, and we're still taking care of the ice. Always a problem here at Bird Arena. You would think that in a place where the goal is to have a sheet of ice, they could take care of that, but no, Shane. No, they do a great job. It's not their fault. Uh, as I always say to everybody who asks about uh, Bird Arena's weathering ice surface, it really comes and goes with the season. Uh, a little bit of an uncharacteristically warm November day here in Athens, and the rink is uh, kind of feeling the effects of that a little bit here. The ice looks pretty wet right now. Uh, they got a couple divots and pivots they got to work out uh, along the boards, but that's nothing uncustomary of Bird Arena. Honestly, they have done a great job, the ice crew has all season long, of making this at least playable for the Bobcats. Uh, we know Coach Hogan continues to gripe about uh, the surface that his team skates on at home, but uh, they really can only do what they can get done, and uh, they're going to have to just kind of work over the rest of it. It appears as if now we have a gentleman with a blue bucket full of snow. This blue bucket has a green stripe. He's taking the snow out of the blue bucket, placing it on the ice and smoothing it out with his right foot currently right now. There's a gentleman in front of him near the red line with a shovel. He is doing the same. He applies the shovel back into the bucket. He moves the bucket now more towards the red line, stomps on it with his right shoe, uh, appears to be utilizing that shovel as well eventually too, Shane. McCoy Lamaski looks on. Gives him some words of encouragement there now. Skates over and has a word with Grant Hazel. The two completely baffled by what's going on in the wall over there. Looks like they might be nearing a completion, putting the finishing touches on what hopes to be a smoother ice surface there along the boards. Davenport getting an extra stretch in at the blue line. The Bobcats all hanging out with Jimmy Thomas, probably having a word about what number 30 sticking down there all by himself. Yeah, I'm sure uh, they'd like to keep the puck out of his end as this game progresses. We still have action with this blue bucket full of snow. They're taking the snow out of the bucket and patting it down on the ice ever so slowly into the other zone, up near the 60th anniversary logo. Uh, this bucket, like I said, has a green stripe on it. Now that man at the blue line is utilizing that shovel to pat the ice down. Really want to get a smooth playing surface, Shane. Don't want any uh, divots or jagged areas of that ice. It is clearly a two-person effort right now. Tanner Swift growing a little impatient there, trying to come out of his crease to see what's going on. When are we going to get this game back underway, Ethan? You know, I'm not sure, but we have to continue uh, to, to smooth down the ice. Ethan, for all Ohio fans watching, we're sure there are a lot of Buckeye fans, too. Ohio State playing Iowa today. You know what happened with that game? Well, what did happen is that Iowa put the beating on that school up north, as we like to call it here, right down Route 33. Ohio State, a tough loss. That's two of them now on the season, Shane. Uh, a lot of Bobcat, or a lot of Buckeye fans here at Ohio University. Uh, I'm not sure why. Maybe they're lost. Um, but this is Athens. This isn't Columbus. Uh, so I do see a lot of Buckeye fans here at Ohio University, and that must be disappointing for them. Not only not being in Columbus and being lost in, in, a, in a cool place like Athens, but also having your football team lose uh, a bad game after that huge win last week. Has to be tough. Ohio State now with the same record as the Bobcats. Both at seven and two. As we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, Ohio facing Toledo this week gonna be a big matchup. But we're back to action here. The ice finally smoothed over. 13 seconds off the clock to begin the period. Tanner Swift with the save for the whistle. And both teams will line up at the dot in the Panthers zone. Gianni Evangelisti out there for the Bobcats. And the green and white win the faceoff off the draw. 
Davenport plays it on and moves it out of the zone. Hazel collects it and dumps it right back in. Over to the boards is Palasics and Craddock. Kicked away by Davenport and back out to the other side of the ice. Grant Hazel with the pinch, keeps the puck in before it finally skates over the blue line and comes back to center. We saw Swift play that puck out early in the net that period after that previous frozen puck there. Not afraid to leave the net. Corgan with a shot. Beach ball down by Jimmy Thomas. He looked like he was playing keep it up over there as he blocked that one away. Ohio go the other way with it right now. Timmy Turneau with a body on Arnaud. Or Arnaud, excuse me. Sam Basic bats one down. Ian Thompson picks up the garbage, skates into the zone, and shoots one off the back end. Brian Lubin collects it and has his puck interfered with by Basic. It'll go into the Rafters for a whistle here. A minute 30 off the clock. Shots still 12 all. Yeah, that Rafter puck thankfully coming back down here to Cyan Seabird Arena. Both teams uh, getting some changes on now. Lubins looks like he's going to take this face off against uh, Mowry there. Ryan Lubin back on the third line for Coach Hogan. He played on the first line for a number of weeks. Did very well. 11 points on the year to make it 12 after last night's goal. And number 10 has been getting it done for the Bobcats. A plus 15 on the year as well. Really a maturation for Brian Lubin. He has a puck at his feet right there. That's the back of the net. Could not tuck it. it was Tyler Harkins. Number 22 loses the puck. And Austin goes the other way with it. Leaves it for Mowry. Sherman Mowry, a goal scorer yesterday, back on the ice for the Panthers. And he'll converge down low. Leaves it for Cohen over the goal line. Tyler Lell with the assist, picks it up. Tries to dangle around. Jake Houston unsuccessful. And Huey will have his clearing attempt denied by the Rafters. We'll get a whistle here. As the cantankerous structure of Bird Arena says no. It'd be interesting if we took the roof off this place, maybe played a little outdoor hockey one of these days. We talk about how the ice changes with the season. I don't know if it had much of an effect either. I think it would still be either A, just as cold, or B, just as warm in here. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I would like to see Ohio or maybe some ACHA team play a game outdoors. That would truly be special. That would be something that would be good publicity and good for uh, the ACHA. You gotta wonder why they haven't gone to that yet, Ethan. A lot of different programs, I know my high school uh, did something similar uh, collegiately at the junior level, have played an outdoor game. That would be something that's pretty special. If you had to pick an opponent for Ohio in that outdoor game, who would it be? I would like to see one of the heavyweights like like Adrian or your Minot States of the world, Ohio, have a crack at. I know we saw uh, saw him, uh, Lindenwood, also play Ohio tough these last couple of years. Maybe in Ohio school too, maybe Kent State. There's a goal. And play comes to a halt after Davenport gets a goal from the blue line, a shot that was sent to the net. Looks as though it might have been Chris Corgan's goal there. I don't know if that was reflected out in front. Jimmy Thomas looked one way and the puck went the other there. But nevertheless, Davenport cuts the lead in half here. Another quick goal to begin the second period for the Panthers. We saw them tie the game last night on Everett Thompson's early second period goal. As we await confirmation on that play, uh, we will get the goal scorer to you guys in just a minute. Uh, but a beautiful rebound by the Panthers to come back and cut this lead in half. And they have the puck once more as Weisgerber directs it to the other side of the ice and it is sent in by the Panthers. Shane getting word now that Everett Thompson is officially going to get credit on that goal and it's going to be assisted by Chris Corgan, Everett Thompson from Chris Corgan. So it does appear as though Thompson must have got a stick on it as it made its way through the slot and to Jimmy Thomas's crease. Chris Corgan with a shot at the point. A very smart attempt by number 16 uh, to find an Aaron stick out in front. And the Panthers keeping themselves in the hockey game, Ethan. 
They didn't go away yesterday. And they're showing no signs of slowing down here tonight as they cut Ohio's lead in half. Johnny Vangelesi in his own zone right now. Leaves a puck for Jake Houston. Back up to the number seven of Angelesi and out of the zone. Blasic centers one. Blockered away by Maori and back to the point for Gross. Stops and sh shakes off a man over to Houston. Shot by number 11 to the net. Palacics with a second attempt. He has the puck once more. Backhand by number 28. Blocked and another shot by Craddock over the right shoulder of Swift. Great pressure from Ohio right now. Craddock helps out Evangelisti down low. Back up top to Houston. Over to Gross. Shot by number 13. High off the glass behind Swift and banked over to the top of the blue line once more for Houston. Bobcats head coach last night, Sean Hogan, was very complimentary of his how his team responds after goals. Another good showing right here after giving up that goal. Rory Bussing finally able to get the puck out of the zone for the Panthers. A big hit there by Palacic. Joey Ogden had his head down. Almost an ugly play there. But number 26 looks to be all right as Ohio takes the puck back into the zone. Evangelesi. Up for Houston. Back to Evangelesi. Turno down low. Drag down. No whistle on the play. They're going to let them continue to skate. Gross over to Evangelesi. Shot there. Another rebound by Harkins. Cannot find the back of the net. Tanner Swift answers the bell for the Panthers. And Davenport gets it out of the zone. We'll have an icing as Jake Houston watches on. Ohio with some great pressure, their best of the game right there, now taking the lead in shots 16 to 14, with 14 minutes and 29 seconds remaining in this period. Tyler Harkins, a pesky player at the bottom of the net, continues to crash for Coach Hogan, as we see the Burn Arena T-Rex with a serious trot over there, looks like a chicken running around those bleachers. And another shot off the face up by the Bobcats, but Tyler Harkins, has been a difference maker down low for Ohio, has he not even? Yeah, he's really improved his game in all aspects. Definitely down low. Not the biggest guy, but plays like he's 6'5". He had the primary assist on Nick Gross's goal tonight, which brings him to 16 points on the year in this 11th game. Tyler Harkins out for a couple contests with a lower body injury early in the year, coming back and doing great things for Coach Hogan and Ohio. Garrett Jenkins swipes one from the corner, sends it back down low, and it's played on the other way by the Panthers. That is O'Ron leaving it for Thompson, and out of the zone comes the captain. Jenkins picks up the fluttering puck in the neutral zone and skates the other way with it. Now number 29 leaves it for Cody Black. Shot by Black into the chest of a Davenport defender. That was Guidelock, who squeezed the biscuit between his arms. Hand up for Swift, as the Bobcats are guilty of icing the puck. I don't there. know that they were. I think they were winning that race. I think that was a little bit of a premature whistle there. But before that, Tom Evans had a good play shipping that puck out of the zone. He was going to be pinned there by three Davenport Panthers. And Tom just chipping that puck out leads to an icing. But Tom was in trouble there. They were closing in on him. Tom Evans making the most of his opportunities in the lineup for Coach Hogan with Garrett Jenkins back. He will continue to play because the Bobcats have been so short-handed here recently. And he has done a great job still on the ice for Coach Hogan. Oh, and over to Cody Black as the Bobcats enter the zone. Big shoulder there by number 18 down low. Puck comes all the way around and over Sean Bayard's head. Grant Hazel looks on and gives chase. Elmore back out of the zone with it now. Number 20, weaving his way through the neutral zone. Shot there by Elmore into the netting for a whistle. About seven and a half minutes have evaporated off the clock here. Ethan Davenport with an early goal. Cuts the Bobcats lead in half. 12, excuse me, 17 to 15 are the shots in favor of Ohio. Yeah, another great shot coming there from the stick of Garrett Elmore, a big guy, six foot five, using his size right there to hang on to the puck, skate through defenders, and just get a good quality shot on net and force a face off. Baird with a shot redirected out in front. Falling on it is Swift. Almost took another precarious bounce. 
out there for Sean Baird. And number 14. It was a great play by Swift there. to keep an eye on that puck the whole time despite that deflection. Great save. We were talking by about Swift. we were talking about how Ohio was doing a very good job of setting up those redirects and those tricky plays off the boards. Another example of how Tanner Swift is gonna have to remain agile in net for the Panthers. Those all red and black pads. Kind of looks like uh, Spider-Man out there or something. Yeah, he's a he, he's he can do the splits like the Spider-Man. Does not have eight arms and legs. But he well, neither did Spider-Man. He's doing well with what he does. Spiders have. do. He doesn't get webs either, though, so let's not forget about that. Waves his arm up in protest. We'll get another icing here as the Bobcats dump the puck into Davenport's end. Tired bodies out here for Ohio. Sean Baird and Grant Hazel still on the ice for Coach Hogan. This is though Drew Crandall, Tyler Harkins, and Zach Frank will be the forwards. Still not a lot of open ice, Shane. A very physical game. Much more carefully played uh, than the game we saw last night. Hazel leading the rush now for the Bobcats off of the shin of Orond. And Hazel picks up the puck once more. Leaves it low and a crazy cross check. And a hook there. We're going to get a holding penalty from number 55, Walker Orond. Wraps his stick around Zach Frank. Almost put him in a chokehold there down low. And he will be heading to the box. Excuse me, that was Corey Bussinging, who was the guilty uh, accomplice there for the Panthers. Yeah, Bussing with the textbook holding penalty there on Zach Frank. Wraps his body and the stick around Frank. Pins him up against the boards. Can't do that. And he's going to the box. This potent Bobcats power play is going to have another chance. Ohio. With five goals last night, getting out to an early lead on the power play tonight as well. With another opportunity as Brian Lubin rips one in the slot. Saved there by Swift. Another pass in the slot for Lubin on the one-time attempt. Over the head of Swift. Pretty pass there by Evangelisti too, Shane. Those one-touch passes working wonders for the Bobcats. Houston waits over to Evangelisti at the circle once more. Top of the zone for Houston. Walking with it, shot. Saved by Swift. 11-17 remaining in the second period. 36 seconds off the board on the power play for the Bobcats. It's really nice passing. Down low by Johnny Evangelisti and Brian Lubin setting each other up uh, for differing scoring chances. Specifically, though, that one in the slot. Yeah, with that one time. Yeah, like you said, the Bobcats are setting up some nice plays in the slot because of their passing. If you're Davenport, you cannot afford to keep giving up the middle of the ice like we've seen them do so often. Sean Hogan alluded to that in his postgame comments last night. They have to keep to stop giving up the middle of the ice. Ohio's too good to give open space. They're going to take advantage of their goals. And looks like we have another ice problem right now. We're getting it figured out. Having a word with Swift too. Are we? Are the referees? Lubin wins the faceoff. Back to Evangelist in the Bobcat setup shop once more. Gianni up top to Jake Houston. Back to Evangelist. Over to Houston again. Fakes. One time by Evangelist. He blocked by Everett Thompson, number 22, getting in front of the one timer. And Ohio possessing the puck out in front again. Pass between Baird and Houston. Sets up Evangelisti on the other side of the ice. Over to Houston. Shot there down low. Lampron tried to bury the rebound. The Panthers finally get the puck out to send her ice and into the Bobcat zone. That is Adam Guidelock with a couple Bobcat defenders on him. He will head to the bench. Jake Houston will go the other way with it. Threading the needle is number 11. And he is denied as he tried to make his way to the top of the circle. Puck down low for Walker Oron. Back out to the hash, played behind Grant Hazel and out of the zone for the Panthers. Ohio, a good power play. They're coming back the other way now, just 15 seconds left. Ohio Craddock walked it into the zone. The Bobcats now with the puck. That is Nick Gross, shot by number 13. Comes to the stick of Palasic, another one! And don't go back to basics, Mike Palasics. A shot off the rebound. He wastes no time in throwing it 
Right back at Tanner Swift. The Carone's off a couple bodies. Not sure if it hit anybody on the way through, but it looks as though number 28 will be the beneficiary of that goal for the Bobcats. Right past the halfway point in this game. Yeah. Ohio takes a three to one lead. Mike, a goal scorer all season. That's gonna be his sixth on the season. One of those guys who's really finding his game here at Ohio University. The physicality, the goal scoring, Mike Palasic getting it done. We'll see if that's a power play goal. That was scored right as the power play was expiring. There you have it, folks. Mike Palasic with the goal, his sixth of the year. And Ohio again with a two goal lead. We talked about that being the most dangerous in hockey. We saw Davenport come back last night to tie the game up after Ohio led 2 0 here. This shift specifically is going to be very important for the Bobcats. Not letting Davenport respond again quickly. Especially when you're playing with 11 forwards. They suited up Fiala. I don't think he's going to play here tonight. Still another third period. Still another period left. We'll see if they need him. But they're down players right now. Super important to get out to leads and preserve them if you're Ohio with their depth issues right now. Jimmy Thomas, a big reason why the Bobcats still have a two goal advantage here. Shots now 23 to 18 in favor of Ohio. Jimmy Thomas collecting 17 of those 18 shots by the Panthers. A stalwart for the Bobcats. And somebody that Coach Hogan relies on thoroughly. Timmy Turneau walked it into the zone, was dragged by Pat Modoff off the puck. Number 42 for the Panthers has it down low again, stripped by Turneau. He returns the favor. Now we're tied up with Houston. Number 11 wins the battle and gets the puck back to center red. Gross up along for Turneau, directed into. The red and black zone. The Panthers out again. Bassett will direct the puck in himself. Jake Houston off the boards. Up for Garrett Elmore. The Bobcats back out with it. Evangelisti plays six Elmore. I'm seeing a lot of ice time this period. Evangelisti centers one into the netting and out behind the fans standing out of the glass there. Somebody's gonna get a lucky souvenir. Yeah, a nice souvenir. And there's a lot of people here at Bird Arena again tonight. I'm sure we are at a, a sellout, if not very close to capacity. Last night, 1,550 people, a standing room only self. They physically couldn't fit anybody else in the building even. Packing them in like sardines, like you said last night, buddy. Special stuff on this dad's weekend. And for Ohio University players, with dads in attendance, this has got to be a pretty special weekend indeed. It is dad season out there. Watch out, folks. You heard him first. And for everybody who couldn't make the trip to Athens, Ohio, we'd like to thank you for tuning into the broadcast tonight. All Ohio Bobcat family members and Davenport Panther family members as well. Specifically, as you mentioned, in Kentwood, Michigan, the Capino Sports Bar having a little watch party but also in Western Michigan too, a bunch of families for the Panthers that are tuning in. A shout out to all you guys. We hope you're having a safe and happy weekend. Definitely this game appreciate it a lot watching them hone our craft. Mike Blasek's over to Adventure. He got the Blasek shot. Saved by Swift. It's the Bobcats trying to make quick offense. There's some nice passing by number 28 and number seven. We've seen those two hook up a couple times in the early season here. They have formed a formidable second line, Ethan. Yeah, great save by Swift there to Stone Palasic. Great pass there by Evangelisti. Ohio's got to get it out Tripped right now, though. Is Jenkins. No penalty on the play. Puck comes to the stick of Evans and is worked around the other side of the ice. Guidelock with a shot from the point. Blocked away by Jimmy Thomas to the corner and back up top for Lale. Everett Thompson uh, blatantly screening, uh, clearly screening. Here's a high stick for sure. No worries there as Tyler Harkins picks up the batted puck out of the air. Off the stick of Bassich. And number 22 will go down low and battle with Guidelock. What I was saying about Thompson there is good screen by him. Ohio can't be, let, be letting that happen in front of Jimmy Thomas. That's a great way to get goals. Deflections have been uh, something that Davenport's been looking to do all weekend. Out of the zone goes the puck. Houston chases on. He'll stop and have his attempt 
finally lead the zone. Brian Lubin back the other way for the Bobcats. Number 10 leaves it for Harkins. Over to Gross in the slot, shot by number 13. Blocked by the Panthers and sent to the corner. Bussing now with it, walks it safely back to center red for the Panthers. Jimmy Thomas leaving that net again. We've seen him play the puck a lot this year. Very good at it, very responsible at playing that puck. Sometimes a third defenseman back there for the Bobcats. A whistle here as the Bobcats enter the zone. 5.44 remaining in the second period. Ohio with a 3-1 lead. Well, it's been another tight hockey game here tonight, Ethan. Last night it was 2-2 at one point before Ohio went on a score and rampage. What do the, what, excuse me, what do the Bobcats need to do uh, to increase their advantage before the end of the period here? I mean, I think they just have to stick to their game. They have to stick to their guns. We saw it last night. It wasn't until the third that they kept, they started running away with it, rather. So I think if you're Ohio, you just got to stick to your game plan, focus on getting more shots to the ice. Huge hit there on Houston. Uh, but yeah, just stick to your game plan. Things getting chippy out here as both teams exchange Heavy bodily blows. Garrett Elmore tied up with Cohen down low, working that stick. And finally, Cohen's able to get that puck off. And badgering Elmore. Davenport Vets is pretty excited there. A lot of banging the sticks on the end boards. They're trying to get some energy back in this game. They're by no means out of it. They're playing a better uh, brand of hockey this period despite giving up that goal. Gross evades a couple players from the Davenport. Panthers squad and walks through the neutral zone. Davenport able to get that puck back to Jimmy Thomas's area. Deshaun Bayard mishandles the puck, picked up by Thompson, and a brick wall in Bayard meets him at the blue line. No can do for Everett Thompson. Uh, Sean Bayard is a guy you, you cannot go through. Not the biggest guy, just under six feet, I think he is, but a physical player at that. Bad turn Turnover in the slot. Weisgerber now with it. Can't get it through Zach Frank. Number 21 picks it up behind the net. It goes back out with it. Loved away by Guidelock and Hazel with pressure. Jimmy Thomas just took a little jab there at Chris Corgan. Bobcats got away with one right there. Jimmy Thomas not taken kindly to the Davenport players getting in front of his net. We've seen Jimmy Thomas around the rink. We know he's a feisty character. He is. <laughs> a definite ball of fun for the Bobcats, he likes to have a good time. Drew Crandall over to play six at the top of the zone. Sean Baird calling for reinforcements as Kyle Craddock walks onto the ice. He watches on as that puck comes from the corner to the hash, picked up by Mike Palasic. Back down low for Jenkins. And he cannot get much on that shot. A wasted opportunity for number 29 almost as he walks down low to the crease. He has a puck down low again. Jenkins turns with it, shot by Jenkins low, and kicked away by Swift. Ohio retreating in their own zone right now, icing. Davenport players want to want to call right now. I know Wade Weisgerber is out there on the ice talking with the refs. I think they want that last Jimmy Thomas uh, stab, if you will, by his goal stick there called. I can't blame him. You win some, you lose some. Yeah. And this was a losing effort. The rest are having none of it here as Ohio congregates at the faceoff. Doc Kyle Craddock goes around. And we're going to have timeout call on the ice here, Ethan. 313 remaining in the second period. Trying to see what's going on over here. They signaled for a timeout, but the clock now running with 55 seconds. They're about to drop this puck with a problem on the clock. A series of miscommunications here. It looks as though they finally get things settled. What was that all about? We'll have to. Yeah, I don't know. That, that was just that an was absolute weird. mess. Absolute mess. Sorry for everybody at home. No timeout. Play continues as Tom Evans banks one off the back end, picked up by Jenkins and sent out of the zone. A calamity of errors there by some scorekeepers. I'm not sure what was going on, but we have hockey again at Bird Arena, three to one. Entering the waiting moments of the second period. Garrett Jenkins loses the puck to Cohen. And a lot of people are upset with the amount of players on the ice for Davenport. Six guys out there. The refs miss it. The refs have been missing some calls here this period, let's be honest. 
Iran directed one. Jimmy Thomas's way. Settled by the Bobcats and going the other way with it is Brian Lubin. Speeds into the zone and he's dragged down by Oran. Puck at the two's feet and poked away by the Bobcats. Finally played out by Davenport. And they'll Kyle get it out of the zone. Almost intercepted that pass right in front of the uh, Davenport net there. Good back check uh, zone pressure there by Ohio. Houston misses Harkins on the feed through the neutral zone. It's played on by the Panthers and back out to Nick Gross at his own blue line. Gabe Lamprock kicks it to his forehand and plays it ahead to Harkins. Into the zone is 22 shot. Trickles away from Swift. Backhand attempt there. Drives the puck to the net. Swift will grab it along the side of the cage and freeze with a whistle. 143 remaining in the period. This is a Tyler Harkins getting in down there and is in the mix. Cody Black as well was in on the action. And Tyler Harkins is always a guy who is not afraid to crash the net there, get into the scoring areas, the nitty gritty areas. A grinder who also has a tremendous amount of skill. We see him out there oftentimes at practice before uh, the rest of the team takes the ice working on his stick handling. First line out there for the Bobcats. Cody Black yet to score this year. It'd be nice for them if they could feed the puck to number 18. We'll see if he gets an opportunity out here with a minute and a half remaining in the second period. The puck comes pass by to the top of the zone. Yeah, it was. It's a beautiful pass by number 20 over to Houston. Number 11 shot high off the glass. And back out to the top of the zone for the Bobcats. Picked up by Houston there. It's sent down low once more. There's Elmore. Met by Bussing and Everett Thompson. Pressure there by the Panthers. But the Bobcats able to escape with it. Lampron with a wraparound attempt. Swift was there for the answer and it's pushing and shoving as Tyler Lerwin, Garrett Elmore get into it. Lampron over there being dragged around like a rag doll by Corey Bussing. The two falling to the ice as Bussing gets in a shot. What happened? Down there even everybody is hot. Right Tensions now. exploded. This is an explosive whistle there. Lampron and uh, looks like Lane were mixing it up there. Almost, almost a fisticuff. So we've got what the Davenport captain is having words with the referee Everett right Thompson. now. He was shouting at the referees. Everett Thompson saying this is scandalous, Ethan. He's not pleased. His dad's in the stands here. You don't want to hear all that foul language, Ethan. There Jody are people. children present at Osian Seabird Arena. Let's at least keep it PG, folks. Tyler Lale involved in a scrum. Gabe Lampron. Jostling with Corey Bussing. You never know what is going to happen. If you never do. We've been calling hockey games for a year and a half, and if we've learned one thing, it is, like you said, you never know what is going to happen at Osiancy Seabird Arena. And as the dust, dust settles here, looks as though Bussing will be in the box for two, and Gabe Lampron will join him for two with the tussle. Over to the side of Tanner Swift's net. It's Gianni Evangelos. He picks the puck off, drives to the net, and he is dragged down. It looks as though we're going to get a tripping call. And it's going to be a power play for the Bobcats now. Kind of hoping to see Gianni Evangelos to put on some theatrics there as he goes to his knees, unable to get the shot off. But Ohio will get an opportunity on the man advantage here. With 53 seconds left, this is very similar to what happened at the end of the first period. But Gianni himself buried a power play goal to put Ohio up 2 nothing in the waning moments. Yeah, he's going to be back out there on the ice right now. That's definitely a penalty that you're kind of forced to take if you're Davenport. Gianni Evangelisti, a skilled guy you don't want to see in front of the net now. Ohio's going to have even more room out there. Four on three power play with Houston has it now. Over to Grant Hazel. His shot is batted out of the air. Mike Palasics with a good stick work there. Back to Houston up top. Fraser, one timer. Shot there by Hazel. And he put all of himself into that shot. Yeah, you do not want to be blocking that shot if it's coming off the stick of Grant Hazel. Wow. Houston into the zone. Watches on. Finds Palasic streaking to the net. Couldn't catch up with the puck. Grant Hazel keeps it in at the top of the blue line. Walking is Houston. Leaves it for Evangelisti in the circle. Walks it low. Back to Houston up top. Shot by Houston. Gloved by Swift and squeezed for the whistle. 4.9 remaining on the clock. 
Ohio trying to get another late goal here, grabbing a three goal lead, walking into the locker room again, the two. They'll have some time as this faceoff will be dropped with about five seconds remaining uh, to get the puck back and get a shot off really quick as they do just that. Jake Houston blocked down in front by Evangelesi. Wrong place, wrong time for number seven. And that puck did not find its way through traffic. Ohio had to settle for a two goal lead at the end of two. Try again at the end of, or at the beginning of, excuse me, the third period when they come back out on the ice. But it was a great period of hockey. A goal piece for each side. 3 1 now is the score after 40 period, after 40 minutes, excuse me, after two periods. Ethan, uh, more of the same from yesterday. Uh, a little bit different at times too, but for the most part, these two teams are very evenly matched. Yeah, definitely. We saw Ohio pull away in the game yesterday. The score is uh, a little bit more far apart than it would indicate. Uh, Davenport did get a late goal there to make it 7-3 to three in last night's affair. But like you said, it's a very similar game uh, through two periods that we saw last night compared when you look at the game side by side after two periods. Ohio has a slight lead. Uh, ultimately able to pull away in the third period last night. That's something we've seen them do throughout the rest of this, throughout this season is pull away from teams really in the third period. Bobcats head coach Sean Hogan and the rest of his coaching staff have said all year this is a team that gets better as the game goes on. And not only in games, we see them getting better in practice, see them getting better uh, as time goes on in everything they do, quite frankly. Um, so I think if you're Davenport right now, you still have a little bit of a penalty to kill here. About a minute and six seconds to kill there as we get a nice little peek at the clock there. Um, still a little bit of time to kill on this penalty kill. They have to up the pressure on the penalty kill. They have to, Ohio has too much time. We saw Houston and Hazel, Evangelisti all possess the puck there with tons of time at the end of the period. You cannot allow that to happen if you're Davenport. They have to increase their pressure on the penalty kill. That's going to mean taking some risks, maybe getting caught out of position, but they cannot afford to just play off the puck, uh, play that you know passive box style strategy on that on the penalty kill. Yeah, Ohio had five power play goals last night. They've gotten on the board a couple times. Again, here tonight, on the man advantage, everything has been clicking for Coach Hogan's unit. That's something that we haven't seen in recent weeks. It has been a work in progress, and they're finally starting to get those results. Uh, for Davenport, though, uh, we saw them get down 2 0 again. Everett Thompson scores to cut the lead in half for the Bobcats. That is his fourth goal of the year. Um, and Everett Thompson is a weapon up in front. He had 72 points in the last two campaigns for Davenport, somebody who can change the outcome of a game like that. Yeah. Uh, who do you want to kind of put on number 22 in the third period to limit his scoring chances if you're the Bobcats? Uh, what's the best matchup for Ohio in trying to contain number 22, Everett Thompson? You know, I think uh, a skill guy like Thompson, I think you have to look at your shutdown defensive pair. And for Ohio, that is Sean Barrett and Grant Hazel, a very physical pair. We saw Hazel letting the shot fly there at the end of the game. We saw him upending some people in that period. So I think uh, if you're looking for a specific matchup, a specific defensive pair, they get out there against Everett Thompson, or quite frankly, Ian Thompson, another guy who's having a great year. For the Panthers, I think it has to be that defensive pair. Uh, you, you know, you, you get, get thrown the body around at these guys, and you know, they, get, they get a little bit, uh, you know, less directing their, themselves to the nets. They get get a little bit thrown off their game, and I think Ohio has done a great job all year throwing off, throwing teams off their game with their physicality, so I think uh, that would be how they should address dealing with Everett Thompson. One guy who has stayed on his game for Ohio, Jimmy Thomas, 19 of 20 saves after two periods, making his 12th straight start for Ohio, showing no signs of wear, no signs of fatigue, continuing to plug the back of the net for Ohio. It would be his 10th win tonight if he's able to hold on. But there's still 20 minutes of hockey to be played. And as we alluded to, Davenport staying around through the first night yesterday, uh, through the first period and a half, through two periods now, only down two. Anything could happen here at Bird Arena. Uh, and with 20 minutes left, it, 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 nothing safe. There's no safe lead here. For Most dangerously in hockey. Very exactly. dangerous right so, now. I'm, I, feel, uh, I don't feel safe. To be action of plenty to finish things off to finish this great weekend of hockey off here presented by Jackie O's the weekend hockey series that you can play uh, with uh, the Movember Foundation the Bird Arena T-Rex yeah. so with the OU Synchro team. everyone's out there's a lot of excitement here at Bird Arena Dad's weekend as well we're going to take a quick commercial break here on the intermission report 
we come back, we will fill you guys in on what you missed after two periods of play and get you ready for the final 20 minutes. Ohio 3, Davenport 1.
Gap Bird Arena after 40 minutes of play. It is three to one, Ohio. We are rocking and rolling and moving along here on the broadcast. To recap that second period for you guys, goal scorer for Davenport, as we mentioned earlier, Everett Thompson potting his fourth of the season to cut Ohio's lead in half, 2-1. Just about 10 minutes into the second period, Ohio responding, Mike Palacic scoring his sixth of the season to give Ohio another two goal lead as we watch pucks flying from every direction here at Bird Arena. Pucks another are being shot. puck night this Saturday. Those green rubber discs floating to the center of the ice. The objective here, getting that puck on that blue center ice faceoff dot. And that one right there, looks like it could be the winner, Ethan. Yeah, I'm thinking that one uh, right in the in a straight line from that center of faceoff dot is going to be the winner. We've we, always wondered how many pucks could the fans chuck if the fans could chuck pucks. Well, we're getting a pretty good uh, answer to that question right now. Yep. We will see. I always wondered how many licks it took to get to the center of the Tootsie Pop. That Al ruined it for me. I never, yeah. I never found out. Yeah, what? Hopped, That's chopped, horrible journalism. Tell me about it. Horrible really journalism upset. by the Tootsie Pop, really Al. Upset. Why ask questions and not answer them? Somebody needs to answer this question for us here tonight. How many pucks could a Chucka Pucker chuck if a Chucka Pucker could chuck pucks? Well, I think there's no doubt that a Chucka Pucker can chuck pucks. We've just seen it several times here at a science I haven't seen any confirmed evidence. I just saw pucks flying. I never saw anybody throwing them. I did see some evidence. We will have to come back and uh, fill you guys in on our results. The puck chuck. Of that finding. But uh, we have out that of two minutes, two and a half minutes away from yep, we, we the sure drop are. of the puck. Thankfully. The of the third period. Thankfully. Ohio 3-1. to one looking to secure another weekend sweep against a top 20 opponent, Davenport, coming into the weekend at 17, falling to four and six yesterday. This would kind of be a heartbreaker for the Panthers if they weren't able to come back and at least make this game a little more competitive here in the third period, maybe try to tie it up. Falling to four and seven would not feel very good, especially in the way that they fell uh, to teams like Linderwood and the way they tell, fell to teams like Adrian uh, pretty badly. I think that they are making huge dividends this weekend, keeping up with the Bobcats. Obviously, yesterday was 7-3, but for a portion of that game, it was 2-2. And I look at the end of the second period here, 3-1. to one, That's nothing that they can't climb themselves out of. Yeah, it's definitely a team, Dad and Davenport, that is. It is better than the record indicates. Like you said, they played a very hard schedule. Lindenwood, uh, Adrian on that schedule for them, teams they've struggled with. Uh, but another, another hard game against Ohio this weekend. Ohio, one of the elite teams in the ACHA. I, I think that's safe to say at this point. Um, I mean, if you're Davenport, it starts with the net first minute and six seconds, minute and eight seconds of this period. They have to kill off this penalty. Going down three, you get the sense that would be huge, even though it would be so early in the period. Going down three, it'd be hard to come back. Yeah, Tanner Swiss going to have to keep the puck out of the net for the Panthers. Obviously, they can't give up any I've been impressed with him tonight. To uh, keep themselves in this game. Yeah, Tanner Swiss had a great game, 27 to 30 saves. That's an even 900 save percentage. Nice man. Uh, nobody who uh, knows how to do that math, but uh, for everybody else, yeah, 900 save percentage. Uh, really good stuff tonight for Tanner Swift. We talked about his body of work last season, a guy that has proven himself valuable to Phil Sweeney and the Panthers, coming out and keeping his team in the game again here tonight. He's going to have to pull out all the stops in the third. Yeah, he definitely is. He's been uh, probably the best Davenport Panther out there tonight, keeping him in the game. This is an Ohio team that you know loves pouring goals on shooters. Got to shoot their goal scorers. They were running wild last night, and they're not, and they still have the potential to, but they haven't ran wild yet, and that's a lot uh, of credit that we owe to Swift. And speaking of goal scores for the Panthers, if I haven't seen out here tonight, it's something that we didn't mention earlier on, but obviously it's pretty evident that he hasn't made his way to the ice. Alex Halford, number 89, yeah. have not said his name once yet. Uh, we weren't updated about any injuries to number 89, Alex Halford, coming into tonight's action, but obviously the leading goal scorer last year for the Panthers, not on the ice here tonight yet. Uh, we will fill you in as we Definitely find out that. about that. Yeah, that is some developing news that could potentially be uh, pretty big for Davenport, missing out on its leading goal scorer from last year in the lineup tonight. So. Uh, we will continue to track that. It's a Bobcats so hockey news alert for you. To the ice now. Team's just about started to meet at center ice here for the beginning of the third period. 
Sherman Mowry watches on from the right side. Kyle Craddock lines up across from him, and Ohio will win the faceoff to begin the period. Back on the power play on the Bobcats as they walk into the Panthers zone. Houston toward the middle of the ice. Brings it to his forehand. Shows his slick skating as he develops a play. Shot by Houston. Snagged by Swift. A big windmill there from number one for the save. Jake Houston, slippery up top for the Bobcats. Yeah, Jake Houston definitely is a slippery guy, having himself a great weekend, taking another shot at the net. Never a bad play to put the puck on net, Shane. Evangelisti battling with Everett Thompson. The Bobcats come away with the victory, but the refs will deny them any forward progress. As they say, they jumped the gun a little bit too early there, that puck coming back out of the zone for a faceoff. Looks like Gianni Evangelisti is going to take this face out for Ohio, Shane. Gianni Evangelisti has improved in a lot of areas of his game. I would say the face-off dot is one of them. Grant Hazel off the drop, brings the puck in for the Bobcats. He turns around and sends it up high for Houston. Dealt to Evangelisti at the circle. Up top for Houston again. Shot by Hazel, whiffs on that one. I wonder what could have been if Grant Hazel connected there. He put all of himself into that shot. And instead goes to the corner. And there's a scrum down low as Oran pinches Kyle Craddock against the boards. Yeah, Hazel winding up there, deep in the zone, trying to keep that puck from getting out. Now, so we're about to have some Davenport Panthers exit the box. Played on ahead for Hazel. Over to the other side for Evangelisti. Familiar spot for number seven. Shot saved by Swift. And it's back behind the net of the Panthers right now. Grant Hazel, a nice pinch along the left hash to keep that puck low. And we'll get a whistle as a couple guys slide across the ice. That's guide lock. It took a tumble. Yeah, we've definitely seen a lot of guys go down tonight. And this ice is looking particularly shiny to start this third period. Definitely a wet sheet of ice out there. Definitely having an impact on the game for both teams, Shane. That slick surface, something that both teams always have to be aware of here at Bird Arena. You never know where the puck's going to go when it catches a groove or a divot. You might just find it in the back and let it after a bad bounce. Bobcat centering toward the slot as Brian Lubin shot. Saved there by Swift. Another attempt by Lubin. And that puck is at his stick once more behind the net. Brian Lubin with a 100% intensity driving the crease of Tanner Swift. Almost found the back of the net again. Got to keep your... Got to keep your intensity percentages very high. Brian Lubin does a good job at that. Picked up by Hawkins, and he takes a gruesome tumble in the boards. Number 22 gets back up and exchanges a couple shoves. Not happy. No, he's not pleased. With that play in the corner, I don't think there was a slew fit or anything like that, but he did take a precarious fall. Yeah, I think it was just one of those bad plays. Both guys coming into the boards hard, get tied up with each other. Again. We were talking yeah. about that slick surface he might have caught. Uh, a groove, but nonetheless, Tyler Harkin shakes himself off and cleans himself up, heading to the bench. The Bobcats will get a new set of forwards and defensemen out there. Cody Black's line stepping ahead for Ohio. Garrett Elmore off the faceoff win, takes the puck to the corner. Back down left for Black, centering for Gabe Lampron. He'll take it and move it along to Nick Gross. Shot by Gross, off the par. Fans are saying that was in. Everybody's confused right now as that puck came from the mouth of the crease back up high. And Nick Gross may or may not have scored a goal there. We're going to get a whistle as the net is knocked off the moorings. But Coach Hogan right now barking at the rest saying that was in, that was in. Yeah, it was too quick. I missed it, but it definitely went off the post. I would not be surprised if that puck tickled some twine. It may have came off the stick so fast that we didn't even see it bounce back out. Nick Gross, both goals he scored this weekend have been absolutely feathered into yeah, the some, net. Some, some beautiful shots. Oh, some great shots, feathered like you said, some very well-aimed shots. Yeah, clearly, it, 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 even if it didn't go in, a great scoring opportunity from Gross. He's really stepping into his game as an offensive defenseman this weekend, Shane. We can only hope this continues if you're an Ohio Bobcats fan. And we see him up on the first offensive pairing with Jake Houston, those two have looked really good together this weekend. Uh, we were a little bit apprehensive about seeing Houston part ways with Jake Viola a couple weeks ago, but 
the time apart has done wonders for both of them. Everybody's playing really well as a unit for the Bobcats defense. Definitely a good advantage to have moving forward throughout the season. You're going to deal with some injuries. You're going to deal with some depth issues, sickness, whatever it may be. And moving forward into the ACHA tournament where it looks like Ohio is going to end up barring, you know, a pretty epic class here, collapse here last half of the season. It's good that Ohio can move these defensemen around. They can all play with each other. It's good to establish this chemistry now so they can have it moving forward. Now we're with the shot off the face off the sneaky attempt. Jimmy Thomas was aware of his intentions making the save. We're talking about the ACHA moving ahead here. We see Minot State occupying the number one position, followed closely by Adrian, an undefeated team right now, who also beat Davenport twice. Nice passing there by the Panthers. Coming into the Bobcat zone, Nick Gross picks up the garbage out in front of Thomas. But Adrian College is trailing Minot State. Illinois right behind them. Central Oklahoma and Colorado round off the top five, Ethan. We saw Colorado last year. We played Adrian College in the ACHA tournament. Uh, how do you like the Bobcats compete level against that top five? You know, I don't think we've got a chance to see it too often here, but obviously last year in the ACHA tournament, this is an Ohio team that was the runner-up. A huge series coming up next weekend on the road at Illinois. They're gonna play two games against the fighting Illini Shane. I mean, that, is, that could potentially be a preview of something we see in the ACHA tournament. Illinois, a team that is always flirting with some really good hockey play. Finally putting things together this year out to some great early season success by the Fighting Illini. Definitely going to be a handful for the Bobcats next weekend as they take themselves on the road. But they're still got to get things done here tonight as they walk through the neutral zone directing the puck Behind Tanner Swift is Gianni Evangelisti. Ohio with a 3-1 lead as play is stopped here behind Swift. I think Kyle Craddock might be going to the box chain. Number eight pleading his case, throwing his hands up. It looks as though the rest won't have it. He will head to the box for two minutes. And Ohio will be down a man here as play moves back to Jimmy Thomas's neighborhood. 15:41 remaining in the contest. Ohio nursing a two-goal lead thanks to a goal from Mike Palasics that put them ahead toward the end of the second period. Now Davenport with a power play opportunity. One for four on the man advantage last night. Yeah, Davenport has to get a power play goal there. It would be huge for their momentum. Great shot there by Lyle. One-time slapper there by Lyle. Saved by Jimmy Thomas. Number five tried to keep it in the zone, but the Bobcats steal it from him. Brian Lubin with a one-time attempt there through the slot. Tried to get that quick release off, and it was saved by Swift. Back the other way come the Panthers. Stolen out of midair. Jake Houston takes the puck and sends it back into Davenport zone. Physical game there is picking up on the penalty kill for Ohio. They're a physical team all the time, but particularly on the penalty kill, they have a strong sense of pressure they sustain during the penalty kill, Shane. We see Ohio's 1-3-1 uh, trap game, normally at even strength. They're gonna have to condense and go 1-2-1 one, one here on the shorthanded opportunity for the Panthers, but a great example of how effective they're able to steal those pucks from the blue line. We saw that two-line pass coming out of the Davenport defensive zone. Stolen by Gross up top and sent right back in. This penalty kill unit has made leaps and bounds of improvement for Ohio. A great block by Timmy Turneau there earlier in that shift. Sean Baird mixing it up there. What else is new? Baird getting physical down low. Jammed up with three Davenport players. That is Chris Corgan who pokes the puck loose finally. Thompson tried to get it back up top, but the Bobcats intercept and swat it back out to Till. Uh, to Tanner Swift's end of the ice. Davenport now with 13 seconds remaining as Walker Oron comes across the blue line, banks it off the post. Jimmy Thomas squeezing down low, keeping that puck out of the net. Two and one, that power play will expire, and Ohio kills off the man advantage attempt for the Panthers. Elmore out of the box from the bench, and he will take the puck shot by Elmore. Swift got a piece of that. It'll go into the neck for a whistle. We've seen Garrett Elmore have a great weekend. Another good opportunity for him there. We're seeing Garrett direct more of his shots towards the net. A guy that's shooting more this weekend. And 
will continue to shoot more as this season goes on. Playing Sean Hogan hockey. Shoot that puck. Never a bad play to put it on the net, Shane. 34-21 are the shots in favor of Ohio. Last night, Ohio with a seven-shot advantage at the end of the game, 44-37. Both teams with a lot of offense this weekend. But Ohio has found the back of the net, and Davenport has it, and that's been the difference, Ethan. Yeah, you got to score goals. Davenport certainly had some opportunities. Not as good as Ohio's, but they've had some. They, they bury some more. They bury one. Heck, next couple of minutes here, we're looking at a great finish. Pat Modoff at center ice, dumps the puck back in. Garrett Jenkins gives chase. <coughs> Play it over to Gabe Lampron, and he will bat the puck out of the zone. Didn't know what to do with it for a second. Decided to cough it up. Guide lock. Dumps it in. Tommy Evans with the puck now. Skates back out. Picked off by Corgan. Centering one for Anderson. And Jimmy Thomas is bowled over as the net is pushed off the moorings. Cody Black flying into the crease and tumbling into his goaltender. Jimmy Thomas looks to be all right, though. Nervous moments anytime Jimmy Thomas goes down for Ohio, but he's back up, he's skating around. The moorings did pop out of the ice here. We're gonna have to deal with this one, folks. You just hate to see this one. Jimmy Thomas with 12 straight starts for Ohio could be their most valuable player. A loss of Jimmy Thomas would be incredibly, incredibly hard to overcome for the Bobcats. Two goalies with talent but not a lot of pedigree behind him and Mason Coster and Jackson Chilbert no, no. haven't had a lot of experience. Uh, Jimmy Thomas is crucial to Ohio's success. Yeah, one start for Coster earlier this season and zero. Jackson Chilbert yet to make his ACHA debut. Definitely uh, more than capable goalies, like you said, but don't want to see Jimmy go down. You get a feeling that if Ohio can get a break from this tough schedule they have, that one of those two or maybe both of them will get an opportunity to play some more, but it's really hard to take your number one goalie out against top 10, top 15 competition, Ethan. Yeah, it definitely is. And Jimmy Crandall. Thomas has earned all those starts. Wraparound attempt by number 15 there. Sorry to cut you off. Drew Crandall almost buried the puck on the opportunity. But Ohio right now watching on as Oron picks it up from behind the net. Drac driving the front of the cage was the Bobcats. And back out goes Bassage. He will direct one to Thomas. Picked up along the ice like a shortstop and settled for his defender to turn up and burn up with. Davenport breaking out of the zone. They've had problems breaking out of the zone all weekend. They've had Ohio beat down the ice a couple of times, but they haven't done it. Uh, their breakouts, that is, with a sense of urgency that I would like to see them do it with. Definitely something they're going to have to do if they want to get back into this game, get the guys rolling down ice towards the net. We saw Davenport at the beginning of the first period yesterday catching Ohio off guard on those line change opportunities. And that's something that they haven't really employed so much tonight. They've been conservative and not so much the aggressor. I think that with 11 minutes and change remaining on the clock, Davenport's really going to have to put a concerted effort toward driving the net and forcing the issue. Yeah, they're definitely going to have to get something going here. Anything, momentum, good scoring opportunity, battle Got to get something going. Anderson touches up as Thompson drags the puck across the blue line and into the zone. Back out for Anderson to pick up in the neutral zone. Sauced on to Sale. Or on to Lale, excuse me. Batted out of the air by Jimmy Thomas on the shot by number five, Tyler Lale. And Ohio watches on as that puck skirts out of the zone and is back into Davenport's area. I think that was deflected. Out. Oh, we are gonna get icing. That puck looked deflected to me, but Jimmy Thomas raises that left glove and his, gets some icing. We got play going back down the other way. Face off, upcoming in front of Swift. Tanner Swift will grab a drink right now, squirt his face off. He has faced a lot of shots from the Bobcats tonight, 35 to be exact, and he has really been a steady Eddie for the Panthers in net. 32 of 35 saves, that puck coming his way once more. Timmy Turneau tangles up with Chris Corgan. The two 16s will go their separate ways as Davenport gets it back out. At the blue line of the Bobcats is a Panther, that is Cowan, and he can't connect. 
from that dump. Timmy Tourneau will pick it up on his own net and drive ahead with it. Guide luck with the keep. Tommy Evans on the interception. Played on by the Panthers and back into the Bobcat zone. Jenkins over to Evans. Up ahead for Lubin with speed. Sloppy game out there right now, Shane. Not a lot of passes connecting for either team. Jenkins stolen by Lou Cohen, and he will stop and start. Threw a couple Bobcats, shot. Sails wide of Thomas. And Ohio gets it out again. Guide lock, met with pressure. Cody Black steals the puck at the top of the zone. Could not find Gabe Lamprey at the left post. Puck goes to the corner. Lampard was camped out there right in front of the net. A great example of why it's never a bad play to throw that puck at the net. Lampard almost tipped that one in. Working the night shift is Gabe Lampard digging that dirt. Finally does get the puck. But it is stripped right away by Anderson. He will shoulder Grant Hazel in number three for the Bobcats. Wins that one as Anderson takes a tumble. And Grand Hazel goes the other way with it. Over to Lampron. And out of the zone go the Bobcats. Back to center red. Played on by the Panthers. Pat Modaf. Modaf quietly having himself a nice weekend, Shane. Modaf. Steady presence on the back end for the Panthers. He has been their stay-at-home guy. This weekend looking pretty good in that role. Everett Thompson, the goal scorer for the Panthers, drives to the net, takes a shot. Saved by Thomas. Back up top for Lael, directed and deflected through a couple bodies. Jimmy Thomas watches on as that puck sails over his head. Another shot by Lael. Picked up by JT for the save. 8.03 remaining in the game, Ethan. 3 to 1 in favor of the Bobcats. This period has been a little ho hum, it's been kind of quiet. Yeah, it's been back and forth, a lot of neutral zone play. Like we alluded to, neither team really taking a significant advantage in this period. Um, I mean, still, still, still a game, Davenport, you know, they haven't been playing their best hockey this weekend or this game, but they're right in this game. They get a quick goal, and we could be looking at, you know, a completely different finish. Jimmy Thomas, one of the main reasons why the score is the way it is, 23 of 24 saves. As he watches on, his team wins the faceoff and wraps it around the zone. Zach Frank loses a puck in his feet. Chris Corgan plays it on for the Panthers. Pat Modaf engages at the line of scrimmage there. He loses the battle to the Bobcats. Up the other way goes Evangelesi and back out to the neutral zone for Jake Houston. Jake Houston also a guy having himself a good weekend. Great pursuit by Frank there to go after that puck get a shot on. That was an onside play. There was some confusion about whether Frank was a little premature over the zone. But the refs give him the go ahead. And they will not do the same for the Panthers as that puck is way dead for a nice 7.22 remaining. And Davenport will get no change as they skate back. Tanner Swift's way, the Bobcats replacing a couple defensive members. Garrett Jenkins now on the ice for Ohio making he returned to the lineup this weekend for Coach Hogan. How do you think number 29 looks, Ethan? I, I've liked Garrett Jenkins in the seventh defenseman role. We've seen him uh, have an increase in playing time tonight without, uh, with Jake Fiala being out, only available for emergency situations. I like what Jenkins has been able to do uh, on the defensive end, but also on the offensive end as well. Cubans, excuse me, Lubin sprints back, he collects that puck, turns it the other way, and Tyler Harkins now on the feed. Tried to send it one for Timmy Tuneau. Lost in translation and back out with it is Luke Cowan. Shot by Cowan. Sandwiched by Jimmy Thomas. He poked up ahead to Tyler Harkins. He'll flip one to the blue line and back out to center goes Garrett Jenkins. Some nice stick work by G.I. Jenkins there. Must have heard we were talking about him trying to show off. For all the Garrett Jenkins supporters at home, number 29 almost threading the needle through the slot. That puck comes down low, and Tanner Swift will engage for the save. Kyle Craddock on his knees sends that puck back to the faceoff dot where it will be dropped. 
Evangelisti just trying to jam that puck behind Swift. Never a bad play to just carry it on into the net and get the puck frozen, get another faceoff. Ohio's been good in the faceoff dot this year. We've seen them, uh, you know, not be afraid to take a shot and that it results in a frozen puck. Brian Lubin, specifically a center that is very adept at taking faceoffs. Another guy who I've really liked for Ohio this year is Zach Frank. Oh, absolutely. I like him a lot. There's a reason why number 21 is plugged every week for Coach Hogan. And one of those reasons is because the Bobcats need more players in the lineup. Another one of those reasons is because he's such a good face-off man, such a great fourth-line presence for Ohio. Yeah, he's as a, he's your classic defensive forward, wins your face-offs, uh, very, very big body, throws the body around. Uh, responsible, also has a good shot as well, likes to see him use it more, Zach Frank. In Craddock's feet and collected by number eight. Over to Mike Palasics and a nice pass by Kyle Craddock. Shot by Palasics, trickling over a pad of Tanner Swift. The goal scorer for Ohio tonight, Mike Palasics, almost added his second. But Tanner Swift stood still and made the save for the Panthers, keeping them in this game 3 1 right now with five and a half minutes remaining in the third period for Davenport. We talked about starting to press a little bit. Garrett Elmer worth the shot there, and another opportunity by Lampron, and it sneaks past Tanner Swift. And Gabe Lampron, I don't know if he punched it out of the air, if he hit off his body. He was out in front, and he looks as though he's gonna get the goal. He is juiced up. He's bringing the woos. Who doesn't love the woo? Ric Flair, you can do a lot of things, but you can never put a damper on Lampry. Great goal. He is having a ball tonight. This weekend, Gabe Lampron has been cash for Ohio. We talked about Coach Hogan's buttons and how he pushes them so well. This was a great button to push this weekend. Gabe Lampron paying a hefty price for the Davenport Panthers who did not Guard him, comes down low, sneaks in behind a few defenders for the Panthers and buries the puck past Tanner Swift, his sixth goal of the year. And now Ohio with a three goal advantage. 446 remaining in the game. They're gonna put the cherry on top of what could be a very sweet victory even. Yeah, it definitely is a sweet weekend to be an Ohio Bobcats fan. Lampron getting the assist, the credit for that goal, gotta love it if you're an Ohio fan. Shane, still four minutes and 46 seconds remaining in this game, but you gotta think that was the final uh, proverbial nail in the coffin. Man, Prost's goal coming from Garrett Elmore to continuing to pad their points. They've been finding each other all weekend, Shane. And they played very well together on that first line. Kind of an unlikely first line for Coach Hogan. If you would have told me this weekend, that those two would play as well as they did on the top line for Ohio. Uh, I would have been a little bit surprised. I really liked Lampron in that third line role, uh, but he has taken advantage of the opportunity. A junior forward that has seen himself kind of be inserted and pulled from the lineup at times over the course of his Ohio Bobcat career, finally getting every, every day, every week playing time and making the most of it. Yeah, you gotta love it. Gotta be rooting for the guy. We talked about the flexibility that this coaching staff has with the defenseman. Well, I say they have the same flexibility with the forwards, seeing a number of different guys getting the chance to play together this weekend. Uh, Elmore and Lampra, and I, I would be surprised if they didn't play a lot more this year together. Four minutes remaining in the contest. Davenport up the ice with it now. Skating ahead. Where the Panthers, Guidelock had his pass picked off in the neutral zone by the Bobcats, Tyler Harkins. Davenport will have to re-deliberate back in their own zone once more. Kyle Craddock watches the puck roll over his stick. Evangelesti picks it up at the Jackie O's logo right in front of the circle. And Guidelock almost takes a crazy elbow there from Mike Blasek. Just want to keep those arms down and give the Bobcats senior forward. Three and a half minutes remaining. This is a trying time if you are a Bobcat you want to play clean yeah just play clean stay out of the box uh, you know play a conservative game of hockey but by all means if you're handed scoring chances we talk about it all the time shooters do have to shoot 
And Evangelist team wasting some tick there. We're finally gonna get a whistle. Could be a for a delay of game there as that puck gets pinned along the boards. And finally, whistle it dead. We'll have to get a face off to figure out whose puck it actually is. Whose puck is it anyway? Whose puck is it anyway? That's a nice game that we like to play here at Bird Arena every Friday and Saturday. One of the many contests and promotions that this lovely rink holds. Back out of the zone, up off the glass, and behind Jimmy Thomas, we'll get another whistle here and ice by the Panthers. And that puck will be dropped in the faceoff dot to the right of Tanner Swift. 3-0-1 remaining in this game. Ohio finally has gotten a significant lead on the shot clock there, 41-26. to This is more of the quantity of shots that we're used to seeing Ohio put up. We're going to get a timeout now here. We had a full start on the timeout a period or two ago, Ethan. It looks as though this one might actually come to fruition this time. Uh, Tanner Swift turtles and shells over to the bench. He has had his work cut out for him tonight, making 40 saves to this point already. A, a tired man in net uh, with two and a half minutes remaining in this game. Ohio, a three goal advantage. He's got to hope that his guys can get the puck going the other way. Yeah, I think if you're Coach Sweeney, you got to consider pulling the goalie here as soon as you establish yourselves in the zone. Uh, really get, you know, a, a zone presence going. Out here for the Bobcats, Brian Lubin, Timmy Tonneau, and Tyler Harkins. What comprises the third line for Coach Hogan? As we mentioned, Brian Lubin this year with 12 points. Tyler Harkins with 16. And Timmy Tonneau with seven. These guys have a scoring of 42. Yeah, goal scorers out there. Timmy Tonneau definitely getting a long leash here in his Ohio Bobcats. Uh, for his brief career at that, it's his first year with the team. Gotta love what you're seeing out of Timmy. A couple of nice blocks there for him. A transfer student from Amira College, an NCAA D3 program, coming to Ohio, and he has made a mark in his first half season as a Bobcat. Pivotal role on the third line for Coach Hogan this weekend, doing so very admirably as he receives the puck down low, stolen by Davenport and out of the zone go the Panthers swatted through the neutral zone and played on by Sean Baird with two and a half minutes remaining in this game Tyler Harkins around Captain Everett Thompson he works it to the top of Davenport's end and no further is the Panthers direct one back toward Jimmy Thomas we'll get a whistle here as Jimmy Thomas settles the puck behind his net 214 remaining here in the third period of Ohio like we alluded to earlier, taking on a strong Illinois team next weekend. That's when they at least have to split with. And Ohio looks to be going to shorthanded here. Tyler Harkins heading to the box. A two minute penalty for cross checking. So Ohio will head back to the penalty kill and the Panthers will head back to the power play tonight. Unsuccessful in their last attempt trying to crack Ohio's impressive PK unit. Cohen through the zone with speed. Whistle dead as he walked over the blue line. We're going to get an offside play here, folks. Minute 56 remaining here in the third period. Got a face-off upcoming. Looks like Mowry may take it against Cody Black. No, Mowry's going to step out now. Off the draw and right into the stands. Nick Gross will have to try that again. Number 13 tonight with his second goal of the campaign. His second in as many days even. Going from slug skater to sharpshooter. Yeah, definitely got to like what you've seen out of him. A, a guy who can get it out of multiple areas of his game. The great skating, the great scoring as of late. You got to hope that continues. The Bobcats, first line back out here. Of Gabe Lampron and Cody about to kill off this PK attempt. Feathered in by the Panthers off the glass and swatted back the other way by the Bobcats. Everything 
academic and scholarly here a minute and a half left. Tano winds up off the glass behind Tanner Swift. Timmy Tano with the rocket. Yeah, winding up, just dumping it in. Why not? Played on by Thompson, back behind Thomas. And Grand Hazel collects it and gets it right back out for the Bobcats. Yeah, good stuff from Hazel. Just send the puck down, get it out. Don't want to be giving up a goal and then make this into a two-goal game. 50 seconds remaining in the power play. Ohio doing a good job for the first minute and 15 of this penalty kill. Timmy Tuneau walks in, shot over the right shoulder of Tanner Swift. Timmy Tuneau almost buries that puck. He can get that one down a little bit. You're talking about the same type of play that Nick Gross had earlier with that high shot finding its way over Tanner Swift's shoulder. Everett Thompson tries to get fancy. He is stolen by Timmy Tano, who head to the bench for change. Drew Crandall takes his place out here for Ohio. 30 seconds remaining in the contest, Ethan. This one looks to be an Ohio Bobcat victory. The win that would move them to 11-2-1 in the regular season. Timmy Thomas, 10-2-1 now after the W. And that will be all she wrote. Warm up the fat lady, folks, with five seconds left. Ohio nursing a 4-1 to one victory. And time will run out on the Davenport Panthers. And this place is electric after Ohio completes the sweep this weekend, Ethan. Another victory against the Panthers of Davenport to take the Bobcats to 11-2-1 after a tough, tough matchup against a top 20 opponent. The Panthers falling to four and seven after the two losses this weekend. Jimmy Thomas collects another win as we mentioned. He was huge again for the Bobcats yesterday with 34 saves, tonight with 26. That sounds like 60 to me if my math's correct. Yeah. Uh, 60 saves there, only gave up four goals. So really good stuff for JT. Uh, for the Panthers tonight, 37 saves for Tanner Swift. He was valiant in net. Poor Davenport certainly held his own. Yeah. Opposite Jimmy Thomas, not his fault by any means. That the Panthers were a big reason why Davenport was in this game. Shane. No, yeah, but you look at what Ohio was able to do with their offense, with the power play this weekend. Really special stuff. A couple more power play goals again here tonight. Uh, Mike Palace is getting in on the action too. The senior forward has been a weapon for Ohio, but Nick Gross really was the storyline this weekend. He had his coming out party here at Bird Arena. Yeah, Nick Gross is a guy who we've known he has that ability to score. Finally fighting the back of the net this weekend. Just a great weekend for hockey. Great atmosphere at Bird Arena. A lot of dads here. Some great causes. And uh, you can play weekend. It was, a, it was a hockey weekend here. You just got to love it if you're an Ohio Bobcats fan. Two back-to-back -back sellouts. Hockey is thriving here in Athens, Ohio. Another pair of victories here tonight. They're going to look to continue that winning pedigree against Illinois next weekend. Yeah, sports in general have been fun here at Ohio during the last couple of weeks. The basketball team getting things started today, both the women's and the men's clubs uh, over at the Convo. Obviously, what's been going on with Ohio football now at 7-2, and two, facing a tough 8-1 and one Toledo team this week at Peden Stadium. And obviously, the Bobcats of the ice uh, were the ice cats. doing the ice cats, if you will, were handling their end of the uh, bargain two as always finishing off another sweet move to 11 two and one really the culture of sports at ohio has just continued to evolve over our time on campus and it's really culminating some special stuff here this year coach hogan with a battered lineup with some guys out with some injuries he had to work through able to patchwork together another couple of victories minus his captain jake Fiella, minus guys like matt rudin uh, still waiting on Tom Bacorny to come back. Uh, but pushing all the right buttons, shifting a couple guys up and through the lineup, uh, going with Jimmy Thomas once more, continues to be a valuable play for the Bobcats. And everything was hunky-dory for Coach Hogan and his team this weekend at Bird Arena. I'm sure everybody loved to see the victories and all the dads are going home with some happy sons. Yeah, a great weekend of hockey here. A lot of goals being scored from Ohio. A total of 11 on the weekend. Seven last night for tonight. And like you said, Shane, they can get that power play moving. This is already a good team. This team could be scary good if they can score
score on the power play at a 25 or 30 percent clip. Yeah, until this weekend, they weren't even clicking at 10 percent. I'm sure those numbers have got to be booing crazily by the amount yeah. of goals that they had this weekend. Obviously, five for seven. Oh my goodness, that's crazy uh, in general. But especially after being starved for that long, that was a big response tonight. Able to get back to the man advantage and make some good things happen. As we hear those three stars announced by this gave way upon on that action. A goal scored here again tonight for the Bobcats. Uh, following the same trend he has really uh, kind of started over the last couple of weeks. Number 23 doing a great job up front. But like we were talking about with that power play, it really does open doors for the Bobcats. They're able to get a lot better uh, you know, opportunities, a lot better situational advantages by being able to have that in its back pocket. Yeah, Lampron and Elmore, uh, I was particularly impressed with how they played together tonight, but like you said on that power play, Evangelisti has been huge on that power play. He made it the bottom of that circle yeah, there. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's just, just borderline unstoppable at times. But like I was saying, Evangelisti and Houston have done great jobs at quarterbacking this power play, if you will. Uh, you see them handle the puck a majority of the time on that power play, and rightfully so. Jake Houston, very patient, uh, very strategic, very fluid with his puck work uh, on the power play. Uh, knows when to wait and hesitate, but uh, doesn't over-deliberate. Great stuff from Houston. You know what this Bobcats defensive unit reminds me of? What's that? It reminds me of the Nashville Predators. It reminds me a lot of the Nashville Predators. Four to five guys that could all legitimately be number one defensemen in another ACHA program combining to make a solid unit for the Bobcats. I look at a guy like Jake Houston, really talented, really adept at scoring. Nick Gross, obviously, just a great weekend. He is continuing to develop nicely for Coach Hogan. Jake Fayella uh, out for the pregame ceremony, but does not play here tonight. And doesn't touch the ice once for the green and white, something that we will keep you guys updated on uh, as we look forward to action in the next few weeks. Uh, we will have updates on his status. As we talked about earlier, he missed a couple games in practice, but everything looked to check out. He was on the ice last night, did not hear any word about him getting injured, uh, so that must have been something that either happened today, maybe it was an illness, something like that, but uh, concerning for Ohio, we'll keep you monitored on that, but as mentioned, uh, Houston, great, Gross, great, Fayella, a stalwart up front for the Bobcats, Grant Hazel, you cannot say enough about them. Don't forget about I Gary think, Jenkins, either I stepping up in that Garrett seventh Jenkins role. back in the lineup too, but Grant Hazel, I really think, could be tonight's unsung hero, yeah. that sounds like a role that he's not really familiar with, because he's usually somebody who's pretty boisterous, you hear about him. But uh, Grant Hazel, kind of the unsung hero tonight, doesn't show up on the score sheet, but his defense was great. The way he pinched down low and kept the puck in for Ohio, continued those scoring opportunities for the Bobcats, something that needs to be commended. Yeah, definitely. Hazel, physical with the body, getting it done uh, with the stick, you know, a lot of assists. Great stuff. Not as many goals as we saw him have last year, at least to this point. But he did get one uh, yesterday. Definitely starting to come into his game offensively. It's showing up on the score sheet as well. Great stuff from number three. Him and Baird, man. That was a pair we expected to be physical all weekend, and they were just that. The, probably the Bobcats shut down Baird. And with that, we are going to send you guys down to the locker room real quick. Our very own Jess Stark is with Coach Hogan for our post-game interview. Jessica Stark here with AVW Productions and head coach Sean Hogan as the Bobcats take the 4-1 win over Davenport and the sweep this weekend. So I'm going to start you off. Um, I noticed Fiella was dressed this weekend but wasn't playing. Yeah. So you're, what, how, what was going on with him here? Oh, he's been hurt. Um, he's been a little dinged up since uh, last week. He didn't. He dressed for Saturday versus Liberty. Didn't play in the last two games. He, he hasn't. He's dressed, but we, we hasn't taken any shifts. Um, but it, it's a great sign for us that we have you know these guys out. Rudin's out. Jake's out. We had Harkins out for a while and Jenkins and. But we're still winning hockey games, so, so that's important. Yeah, so e even with them out, you, you, your guys are showing up and you're still proud of how they're playing? Yeah, absolutely. I think we're doing the little things well. I think it was at times, you know, throughout this weekend that we weren't playing well. But it is, you know, it's good to see that we're still finding a way to win games. Great. Yeah, and that, so Gross got three points this weekend. So how do you think that's impacted the team and the momentum of the boys? Well, I think it's, when Nick, and, you know, Nick got his first goal, his first collegiate goal this weekend. That You know, the teammates are proud of him. And it kind of sparks everybody. He's been playing well for sure. And so, um, how do you think the momentum of the boys tonight versus last night? Um, I thought we started off slow tonight. It was like 10 on a Friday night. You kind of come in and 
think it's going to be an easy game. It's never an easy game in our league. You, you, you can't play like a flow drill. You can't float around. You have to stop and start and, and do little things. And when we do that, we're very difficult to beat. So we got to make sure that we stay on that. And so Jimmy Thomas made a total of 40 saves tonight. So how do you think his, um, he's doing in the back of the net here? Jimmy's doing great. He, he, he's been, he, saved, he bails us out on a lot of mistakes that we make in the D zone where um, we give up some prime scoring chances, but he's back in there uh, to keep the game within one or, or scoreless. And uh, um, definitely been a huge reason why we've had success for sure. So um, overall, your thoughts of this weekend, who you thought really stood out? And I know we talked about the ice, how that impacted everything. I think Jimmy was good. I think, you know, the ice situation is the ice situation, right? But, yeah, Jimmy Thomas was really good. I'm really happy to see our power play starting to score goals. Um, but now our schedule gets really difficult. CSEHL starts next week. Illinois is a tough team to beat at Illinois. Um, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be difficult. we got to make sure we're ready to go on Monday at practice. Yep. So what do you think you're going to push on the boys this week at practice to get ready for next weekend? I think consistency for us. Like we, were, we haven't been able to play a full 60 yet. But there's times where I don't think anybody can beat us, and there's times when I think anybody would beat us. So we got to make sure that we play a little consistent. Okay, well, great. I'm looking forward to next weekend, and good luck with that. And here we are as the Bobcats take the sweep over Davenport. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you. And thank you very much, Jess. Thank you very much. Coach Hogan, some wise word from the Bobcats head coach after a 4-1 victory here tonight, Ethan. Uh, what was the main message from Coach Hogan here tonight? Yeah, a lot to unpack there, but obviously very pleased with the power play. And, you know, the biggest thing I took away from that is uh, how happy he was with his guys, uh, how they've been contributing to play shorthand and come away with wins, find a way to win games. Obviously very pleased with Jimmy Thomas. How could he not be? But consistency, right? He said that, you know, sometimes he looked, they look like no one can beat him, and then sometimes it looks like everyone can beat him. Uh, we saw a little bit more consistency this weekend, but, you know, still points of both these games where Ohio, you know, was not playing up to their potential. Thankfully, the skill took over. Ohio was able to win both of these games pretty easily. Um, but consistency has to be a big thing. Next weekend, going up against Illinois, can't really afford to start slow or anything like that. Illinois will take advantage of the Bobcats, and they'll lose some crucial points. Yeah, and that's the start of CSCHL play next week against Illinois, Ohio. Now, really going to have to bear down and get gritty. Uh, you don't want to lose any ground in the CSCHL, a very tough division in which five, six, maybe even seven teams are all vying yeah. for that number one spot for that positioning heading into the ACHA tournament. Illinois, a tough customer. Coach Hogan and the boys getting a nice test this weekend against number 17 Davenport and responding very well, sweeping the weekend series. You got to like that momentum, as Jess alluded to, moving forward against the Fighting Line 9. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ohio going to look to be more consistent. I think if they carry over their power play, even if they're not going to get five against in one night again. But, you know, if they carry over that power play, that's going to be a good thing. Yep. And that is something that Coach Hogan really uh, emphasized to five goals yesterday, a couple more tonight, not clicking at even 10% heading into the weekend. But they finally answer the critics on the man advantage, come out with – all guns blazing on the power play unit. We saw Grand Hazel give his first of the year. Encouraging sign Nick Gross, obviously, scoring. Uh, Houston getting in on the action. Evangelisti is a sharpshooter from that circle. And Brian Lubin out in, in the slot. Really, really quick release by number 10. He was uh, keeping Swift and Reinhold honest all weekend. Yeah, great stuff. A great weekend from all those guys. Tough loss if you're a Davenport fan, but they just definitely had, did some stuff well at times. And that will do it for us here, folks, from everybody on our crew, from Ethan Graham and Shane Days and Jess Stark down by the locker room. We would like to thank you all for watching the broadcast this evening. Everybody at the watch party in Kentwood, Michigan, thank you for tuning in. Everybody from Western Michigan, we enjoy uh, that you guys uh, came and followed the games this weekend. It was some good hockey. And for all of our Bobcat faithful, we love you guys. Uh, we can't get enough of you guys. And we can't wait for more hockey as Ohio takes on Illinois next week on the road. We will not be there. We'll not have the call, but we will be back in a couple weeks at Bird Arena to bring you guys more of the best coverage of one of the best hockey teams in the ACHA.